saying that record was crazy. Well, this is a good point actually to get into to start because a lot of it. Let's go. Come on, bro. Let's go. How's your girl doing, man? You know what's crazy? Being married, bro, is uh, it's like the next step. You know what I mean? Like next level. Yeah. I was gonna ask you, like, I assume you want to get married. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Soon. So I mean, you never know, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's gonna happen one day. So. Yeah. <coughs> I feel like that is the next step. That's the next realm that you embark. That's the next odyssey that you embark on, so to speak, uh, maritally speaking. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. Well, I feel like. I just feel like more of a, a grown-ass man. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I walk around, I'm like, I like to say it to him, I'm like, yeah, my wife, my wife. Sounds like, great. I mean, you know, if you, know you know had I mean? like a girlfriend that you really fuck with, sometimes you'd be like, oh, that's my wife. But you, that's more like on some puppy love. Yeah. It's like high school shit. It's like, that's not really your wife, bro. I was going to say, Go I, get I said that in high school. In yeah. high school, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's my wife. That's my. No, nigga. <laughs> Hell that's no, not your wife. that's not your wife, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, marriage is a uh, marriage is a, a hard thing. So I feel like people kind of just um, like in popular culture, it's made into like this like facade kind of yeah. like I love you forever this and that. Like, bro, yeah. marriage is lifelong sacrifice. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like real love, I yeah. think is um, real love is truly sacrificing your whole life up for yeah. somebody. You know? Yeah. There's this guy. You know who uh, Thomas Aquinas is? Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas. I know Thomas the no. Train. I don't know him. <laughs> Thomas the Train. The blue nigga. I don't know, I don't know Thomas Aquinas, though. No. So Thomas Aquinas is, uh, he's like a, a really popular saint in the church, right? Okay. And he has this, uh, he has this quote about love. St. Thomas? Is that? St. Thomas Aquinas. It might be a few okay, St. Okay. Thomases, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he's considered a doctor of the church, right? Wow, okay. And he has this, uh, he has this saying about love, and he says that, <laughs> The definition of love is to will the good of the other person. That's his definition. I think that's interesting because it's like, if you think about it, love is like, it's a sacrifice. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, you love your girl, you put your life on the line Definitely. for her. You know what I mean? And uh, I just think that's a fascinating one because it relates to marriage. Yeah. And, you know, we, we need that as men, I feel. Definitely. You feel me? Definitely. So, no, yeah, for bro. sure, for sure. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a, it's a different realm for sure, man. I'm, I'm ready to, I feel like I already am. Yeah, I feel like I already am married at the end of the day and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She's pooping, I'm showering. <laughs> She's cooking, I'm watching. She's pooping, I'm showering. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's like a, uh -huh. that's already a different level, nigga. Yeah. Because a lot yeah. of relationships nowadays don't even stay together. They don't even live together. So, mm -hmm. um, why do you think it's like that today? People aren't ready, and I feel like um, mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like it is a dangerous zone to enter in, maritally speaking, if you're a guy and a girl if, like if, as a couple you yeah. know altruistically coming together co coexistingly if you're like jumping into a lodging situation mm -hmm. i feel like it just gets real difficult if you guys don't know how to deal with each other's mood swings if you guys mm -hmm. don't know how to deal with each other's yeah. signs and attributes and personality traits and things of that nature i so see yeah. it, it can get terrible i mean i've had my ups and downs and trials and tribulations of being with my significant other with my girl and stuff like that and it's mm -hmm. like it could get really ugly mm -hmm. or it can't i feel like maybe having like a consistent pattern of um of a of a sleeping schedule yeah uh having right. anything of that if you have that all together i feel like altruistically speaking the relationship can really just go to the top but if you guys are like all over the place and mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, relationships are harder than what i thought yeah i thought it was just like hey i like you i like you too oh i love you now oh let's have sex oh we're good let's go to the movies i love you mm -hmm. nah nigga it's way harder yeah I'm having anxiety right now, babe. What do I do? Yeah. Right. My mental health is up. I broke my leg. Can you take care of me? Oh, but I got to work. Oh, mm -hmm. but I got... Yeah. There's just so many just different scenarios and scenarios that happen right. in a relationship that people don't think about getting into one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it's a deep topic, my nigga. Oh, 100%. We're jumping right in the bag. Woo! We get right to this, though. Ric Flair, woo, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like every time we talk, I feel we just get right into the come the on, deep bro. Bag. You know, you know how it is with us, man. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, but you know, that's like a overall thing that I was going to talk to you about too. Is like, I really like how um, you you show this, like uh, you show this to the world. Like you, you have a big following now, and you showcase your girl. You showcase like just who you are as a man, and like I feel like in in hip hop, it's not common in terms of like the the themes that we see overall you know what i yeah. mean so it's like 
yeah. I just, I just want to tell you, like, I, I respect that shit. You're like one girl. You're holding it down for her. You're not talking about, you know what I mean? Like, doing this and that. yeah. Yeah. Thank I like you, bro. That. I like that, bro. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah. feel like I just always wanted to be true to myself. Mm-hmm. My artistry, my musicianship. I didn't want to ever put on a facade where I'm like. Every rapper got a gang of bitches. Right. Every rapper got a, you know, fuck with this bitch. Have a side bitch, a main bitch, a little bitch, a Mexican bitch, a black bitch. You know, the niggas, yeah. I don't need all that. I feel like that's more so like imagery. I feel like I've grown and um, metamorphosized past that stage in my life. And I'm like, nigga. And I'm a thug, nigga. So I can't really trust a gang of bitches anyways. Because mm. yeah. bitches love fucking with niggas. And yeah. niggas are haters and jealous. So if yeah. I just stick to one girl and I keep it down to a minimum, you know, you got monkey pox out here, cuz. Oh, You're right. <laughs> Diseases, cuz, and all kind of shit. So yeah. I'm straight, man. <laughs> My wife is like really afraid of monkey pox right now. <laughs> it's really not that big of a deal. That's what I told her. But she has a phobia. Because, like, you'll get it. Yeah, yeah. And what, it sucks. Did you get chicken pox when you were a kid? Yeah, I had measles and all that shit. You did? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's like a... Like I had a all over the place. That's like worse than chicken pox, right? The measles? I feel like I feel like it is. Yeah, I had chicken yeah. pox and measles, if I'm not mistaken. How was that, though? And uh, how, old, how old were you when you got it? Um, I was young, bro. Like, maybe like... Like a kid, right? I was yeah. young as fuck. I mean, honestly, I think I stayed home from like school or something. Damn. And I fucking watched Power Rangers... That's fucking hard. ate some ring pops. Yeah. Went to sleep, put some ointment on it, calamine lotion, and called it a day. I feel like when you're older. You've been a G. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> when you're older, you like overemphasize the problematic situations you endure in life. When you're young, mm. you're more naive to the realities of your situation. Hmm. So I feel like nowadays if somebody gets chicken pox, monkey pox, you're like, oh my God, am I going to die? You go to the ER and you have anxiety. Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. if you had chicken pox, nigga, or measles, or even a cold, I'm like, all right, whatever, cuh. Yeah. Or even like way back in the day, like fools just died. Like you had, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> not to take it there, but like, bro, imagine being <laughs> born, you were like, is like 1147. You were just born. Right. And then you just got a cold and then it's just a wrap. It is what it is. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We born and we gone, my nigga. That's the beauty, though, nigga, because, you know, once you, you know, that's yeah. another top. But, yeah, yeah, shit. Hell yeah, man. You know, let's get into the deep bag. As, bro, we're just, you know what I mean? Let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's yeah. go. Okay. You're, uh, since I ask everybody this, I don't know what I, I get here, but, uh, I, wait. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. No way. Whoa. We got to keep that in there. Hell yeah. Oh. Hey, stop him. Get you, bitch ass nigga. We got it. Okay, so we good. We yeah, good. good. It's that wind, man. It's yeah. that breeze, baby. Going crazy. Oh, we good. We good. Yeah. I think we're solid. I think we're Gucci too. I bet. We're not cutting that out. No, hell no. That was pretty tight. The We're, wind. I basically put like a sail up here. You know what I mean? So. Damn. Yeah. Now we should be solid. Hold on, hold on. Oh, um. Hold up. Let me uh. Let me grab this chair. Real quick. More chairs? Yeah. yeah. You want me to help you out? Yeah, yeah. Alright. You wanna grab a chair each? I got this one. Um Is there any more any more of those? I feel like no? it's just this side, low key. That one was tripping, but I mean I think we should be good. Yeah. Yeah, bro, I think we'll do with this. Yeah, we should be solid. Okay, we're straight. Alright. Let's get it, bro. Let's get it. That was funny. Hell yeah. That was tight. We're about to go viral off this flagship. We need that. <laughs> You gonna keep that in there, nigga? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. My nigga, cuh. Yes, I'm him. Yes, I'm him. <laughs> um, your relationship to to uh, death, how do you view that? Like, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people are scared of that. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Naturally, I have a. I feel like a healthy fear of it to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. I've seen so much of it, so I want to say that... Um, I've unnaturally grown accustomed to it than the mm. re- average person. I don't feel like the average person has experienced much death of somebody that's um, around the lifestyle that I chose to be around when I was younger. Right. You know, being out in the streets and shit like that, it'd be like the first couple of times, it's like it's a shock. Like, what do you mean he's dead? He's not coming back. Like, what does that mean? Mm. Really? Right. And then you go through your depression ma- mode and then like, I feel like Whoa. you get acclimated to the changes in mortality when somebody passes to the other side and I'm just like, it's kind of like numb now. You feel me? Like, obviously, like if a close family member or something like that passes, right. I'll still like take it really hard. Right. Um, but as far as like, you know, homies in the street and shit like that, like I'll just be prepared for it because it just happens and stuff like that. Not even you don't even have to be a gang member. It's just like living in 
the climate that we live in it's like modern day Sodom and Gomorrah cause it's like mm. modern day times where niggas is just, people are just dropping like flies now so right. I think the older that I got I grow and I'm more acclimated to it me personally I have a relationship with me I personally believe in Jesus Christ Father, Son and the Holy Spirit so I have a relationship with him so I think I'm more so yeah I guess kind of fake okay with it. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't embrace it. I don't want it to happen, but I mean like it's, it's, yeah. it's bound to happen in this life t lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just, um, optimistically look to the future and I'm just like, okay, I want to get to the celestial palace. I want to get to the heavenly gates. I want to see my family that passed on and stuff like that, whatever that is going to be in heaven. Right. So, yeah, I feel like it's a, just a, maybe a 50, 50 or a 60, 40 with me. 60%. Yeah. I'm like, Ooh, Right. 40 percent i'm like all right or 50 50 some days it's different you feel me yeah yeah i feel that you know it's like that's another thing too is you actively you uh you never shy away for from your faith i yeah. respect that about you you know there's a lot of people who kind of play it safe and they're like oh, i don't know i don't want to talk about that because it might steer fans away right, or right, shit right, like right, that. right right but yeah that's that's a big thing as a christian like to to outwardly say like yeah i believe in god you know what yeah. i mean there's a lot of things like that but uh yeah i'm kind of on the same pages you there as far as like uh like i think we all have this kind of it's not maybe it's fear it's more just like we don't know what's gonna happen mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like i have this peace in my heart knowing like okay that's where my faith comes in like i'm yeah. sh i'm shooting for heaven bro that's my purpose oh, in, in life you know what i mean like more than the music shit more than this podcast more than anything nothing else matters like nah. that ass my job is not only to get my soul to heaven, but my wife, my future kids, all the people that I, I hopefully come across and able to bring God in their lives somehow. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, um, I, I take it as like an important job. Yes, in, yes, in my, definitely. In my life, you know? But I, I can tell you do the same. Like you, no, for you, sure. You evangelize in, uh, in your art. Yeah. You know what I mean? I definitely, that, definitely. No, I appreciate yeah. that. I feel like being a prophet to a certain degree is, um, it's our job here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Spread the word. Yeah. You know, um, not so much try to like forcefully crusade, like try to convert people, mm -hmm. but definitely instill the the love of Jesus Christ and, and, you know, tell people about him. I feel like that's like our earthly duty while we're here and stuff like that. So I think that's really cool and remarkable that you say that because yeah. I want everybody around me to go to heaven, too. 100%. Even the homies that are like into the atheist, the atheist vibes or whatever the case may be. I don't discriminate. Right. I'm not discriminatory towards anybody's decisions religiously speaking but mm. for the most part man yeah i want everybody to experience uh eternal life yeah Hell it's yeah. it's hard to to think about like eternity it's hard to wrap our minds around it yeah. but i think we just get sidetracked it's like damn we really don't have that much time here no you know what i mean no. as i get older it starts to like crunch more but lately i've been feeling like uh i just been feeling pressure like i gotta get this done you know because i have these intentions too like I have old school like uh, thought processes now that right. have been implemented to me. Like one, I want to take care of my wife and kids. Period. You know what I mean? I want to be able to provide for them, and that takes in this day and age, it's gonna take money. Oh yeah. So I'm trying to get to this bag. Yeah. And it's a pressure right now. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a different kind of thing to try to truly provide. It's, it's for mind boggling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's but, nerve wracking and mind boggling, bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a. <laughs> it's one of those things. That's why I always stay hungry. Mm -hmm. Even if I put out a project or if I put out some merchandise or something like that, I'm thinking about the next thing. Like, yeah. I just wrote three books. You wrote three books? Yeah, I wrote three books. I wrote like, and they're like Damn. fiction, nonfiction, fiction. Yeah. I wrote them, but I haven't put them out. I haven't published them. I haven't had a writer look at them or anything like that or proofread them. Wow. But it's like, niggas be thinking like, oh yeah, he's on some West Coast rap shit. He's on. It's like, nigga, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about books and Barnes and Noble. I'm thinking about, you know. Wow. Um, my my healthy drink that I came out with. It's I saw that. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the genie in a bottle with spirulina. So far. Just different things of that nature. You yeah. know, things that will help people at the same time. Like, not so much thinking in a indecisive, illegal way where I'm like, oh, I got to bust this bank jug or something. I used to think like that because that's just a dead end street. And then when you go to jail, that takes off more time for your life. Mm. So just getting this legal money. Yeah. And implementing the uh, the tools of success that these youngsters and that everybody needs to just be success in the betterment of their life and career that's what the fuck i'm about that's that that'll make me happy i'll go i'll go to my grave happy doing that bro it's amazing you know i see these things and like i can i can see the vision from the outside in yeah but you're right there's a lot of people who i think kind of try to box you into this idea like you said west coast rapper like yeah. you you embody this shit because you you are it you I know? Am like it, yeah. you 
this is you're truly who you are to, yeah. to your core that's, this is just that's, me that's why people are, are drawn to you like yeah. when i first met you i understood that fast i was like oh shit like i grew up in new mexico bro i've never experienced anything like this but i pulled yeah. up to southern california who you are embody all the, like the imagery that i've seen as a kid like with the movies and shit growing up yeah. but you're really him yeah yeah and yeah, it's yeah. crazy to like you know I, I call you a brother dead ass thank like, you brother i appreciate it, you yeah. likewise you know the love yeah. is mutual bro 100 percent. for sure yeah. for sure man yeah Yeah, it's a pleasure to know you (laughs) thank you bro yeah i appreciate that yeah yeah yeah. how did the um the juice thing come together like how you know what i mean i was seeing a lot of businesses and um entrepreneurial mindsetted individuals coming out with like sodas wings um weed weed is one of the things that a lot of you know rappers recording artists or singers they do that yeah (laughs) because you resonate marijuana with that but um right i was like let me do something different and let me do let me figure out something that I do in my daily life. Like I juice a lot. Me and my girl, we drink a lot of fresh juices and stuff. We go to creation. That's fire. Um, but I was like, nigga, I want to make my own juice. So I looked into it and I got with this dude. His name was Center at Straight Up Fast Center? Food. Center? Yeah, his, his name, name was, was Center. Center. Yeah, but with an S. That's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he should be an artist. That's, I never heard of that name yeah. ever. <laughs> his name is Center. So yeah. Center. And um, he was like, what do you want your juice to look like and what do you want in it? And what do you want the its positive effects to be? Yeah. And I told him the effects that I want. I told him I obviously wanted to be blue. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I told him that um, I had this idea of taking Aladdin's character, the genie, okay. and turning it into myself with the braids because I feel like health is magical. And at the end of the day, it's like genie in a bottle. It just made sense right. because it was magic in a bottle. This is like essential fruits and nutrients that'll help you with your vision, your hearing, everything. It's crazy. It's, it's all natural remedies and antioxidants. So right. I was like, cuz fuck this. Like I want to do that and push that to my people. Right. Cause a lot of my motherfucking fans, they might like liquor and, I and see. it's like, it's not my job to like continuously keep, killing you and giving you shit that's not good for your body wow i want to give y'all niggas some shit that's like hey could start sipping this shit because yeah it's fun it's taking the don julio shots and eating burgers and tacos and mm. you know eating everything you know what i'm saying eating lard and shit like that it's fun it tastes great of course yeah but it's like what niggas yeah. don't understand is you need your fruits vegetables you need your vitamins yeah you need your sunlight you need all that so yeah just doing my part really and just, you know, because I would be a fucked up nigga to not spread the love or spread awareness to what you really need in your life. I can give niggas good music all the time, but mm-hmm. what I what I need to be giving niggas is good game, too. Yeah. The you truth. Know? The truth. It's, it's hard for people to hear that. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like, but you're right. It's it's like, of course we want to. Bro, if I could eat Wingstop every day and not feel like like a pile of shit, like, yeah, I would oh, eat every, I would fucking every eat day. it every day. I would go right now. <sighs> but you're right. It's like, what's better? It's like, okay gotta sacrifice gotta eat healthy gotta do the things that are better for your body longevity it's like gonna increase your it's gonna make your life better you're gonna feel better you know you have to but it's hard to tell to to tell people that oh yeah Yeah. oh yeah but it's dope that it's an intention of yours to literally be like okay look i don't want to spread this nonsense to you guys yeah tell you the truth yeah i know you're my fans yeah you know what kind of they like but you're you know know? because it's not fun for a nigga like me to be like yo you guys need carrots nigga (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're gonna be like nigga okay well can we can we slice them up and put them in pico de gallo and make uh, some salsa and right. eat some tacos with it right. or can we put those carrots inside of a burger or something <laughs> no nigga eat carrots the, in a burger eat the fucking carrot <laughs> eat the fucking carrots nigga <laughs> what, shit what made you uh want to just get on this like health wave like was there a change that happened or, you know my girl mean? honestly kind of like redirected me into oh. being oh fuck we're gucci all right we fuck. got the sale up my girl got me in on that health vibe, bro. Yeah. Before her, nigga, I didn't give a fuck, nigga. What? For real? No, bro. Ah, that's I was crazy what women kind of, do to us. <laughs> man, they, they <laughs> for the betterment of yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. Every you know every every man needs a woman by their side. Absolutely. So, nigga, me, I was just eating all kind of shit, and she's like, "What? You eat this?" And I was just like, <laughs> "Yeah, what's the big deal, nigga? I'm knocking back Del Taco and Coke's, Pepsi's. Hell and, yeah, nigga. I'm drinking fifths of te- tequila and shit. She's like, "What?" And I'm just like what's the big deal this is what i this i'm a hood nigga this is what we do right right that's your normal right there yeah yeah but you have to see the effects and the nutrition facts about this and a lot of this stuff she's is not, hard for that and i'm just like i was like what do you mean she was just like well these wow. burritos are frozen in del taco and then you have to understand that you're drinking this soda but then when you water it down with the ice a lot of the ice is saturated by the uh the negative ph balance of the whoa and i'm sitting there like damn it, I, I mean of course obviously at first i didn't give a fuck i'm like yeah i feel you that healthy shit <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I feel it. But then when I dissected what she was talking about, I'm like, yeah, oh fuck, nigga, that's going in my body, right? Oh, cause it's out. I can't. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. I mean, I could do it here and there. Mm-hmm. You know, here and there, I may may have like a little cheeseburger. Why not, bro? Right. Enjoy it. Balance. Yeah. But for the most part, cut not nah, salmon. Yep. nutrients potato not potatoes tomatoes all that shit right you know what I'm saying so niggas eat more salmon and fish and drink more water than ever now that's amazing bro yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I mean I got focused I'm gonna be honest with you I feel it yeah the reason why I got like a lot of the shit I have now like was cause I had to focus yeah I felt like when I didn't have a girl I had no I didn't have a motivation I understand exactly what you mean to take care of myself or take care of maybe getting a spot same small sh- I was just I don't give a fuck, nigga. I got this money. I'm gonna spend this on liquor. Go hang with the homies. I know what, did, exactly. what do I have to care about? Yeah. But if you have like a a daughter, a son, or a wife, significant other, mm-hmm. oh yeah. no, like you're my she's she's my motivation and my driving force. Yep. For the shit that I'm doing now, mm-hmm. for buying a house, for you know manifesting in a greater destiny. Yep. Legacy. You All know. That. Yeah. I feel like women help a man grow. It's from the dawn of time, bro. We're, I mean, we're literally all here because a man fell in love with a woman. <laughs> all of us. Straight up. That was the realest shit ever. It's real. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, you know what's crazy is uh, even from beginning of history, all yeah. all very powerful men, yeah. they've had like a powerful a woman, woman by their side. Yes. You know, it's how it's literally how God created this to be. Like yeah. that's why I trip out when people would, you know, like I'll go back and forth like, fam, this goes back to Adam and Eve. Like, yo, he literally made her out of his rib. Yeah. Out of his rib, his side right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I see it in my marriage too. Like I, I have a I have a holy marriage, bro. We got married in the church. We yeah. did it the old school way. We literally lived separately for, for six months. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um we we abstained for like a little more than six months too before that. Which is crazy. Yeah. It gets it gets interesting at that point. But um that's like what you're describing happened to me too before I got with my now wife. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was, I was just lazy, bro. And yeah. like, yeah, I had all the time in the world. I was, yeah. I was bullshitting with my homies, and yeah. like, I, yeah. I wasn't focused. You yeah. know, and my girl, she, I mean, she comes from, she comes from a place where it's like she grew up rough. It, it, it was, it was tough where she grew up. So she has a certain kind of ethic and character, like, yeah. bro the way that you carry yourself man it reminds me so much of her too like and that's crazy very very attentive you have like it's just like a, a different level of uh, of awareness that she has and she's yeah. just so locked into everything bro she would just be whooping my ass and everything bro and i yeah. started to feel like damn she's like this little five foot mexican beautiful lady <laughs> yeah, and she's yeah, yeah. kicking my ass like what am i doing you know she, yeah. she, she yeah. shouldn't have to is be she from new mexico too no or? she's actually from cali too yeah she's from cali she's what from part? like oxnard area okay yeah. bet 805 yeah 100 yeah, so, yeah 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 ventura wow. county wow yeah. wow yeah man that's a you blessing know? though 100 we needed that i feel like those are um god's blessings in disguise yeah and when you get that blessing you either fumble it mm-hmm. or you keep it around the more you keep it because you know what i'm saying i feel like god blesses every man with like a certain amount of good women mm-hmm. i feel like once you start messing up on a lot of them or if you cheat whatever the case may be if you're All not right. really doing what you're supposed to do All right. i feel like that was your shot but once you got a good one it's like yep you got a shot right keep there. it 100 and yeah. then being sneaky and going behind their backs or anything like that i feel like because i know a lot of homies they talk to me about the stuff they do and i'm just like bro yeah. and they think i'm a square for telling them shit and i'm telling them i'm like bro mm. <clears throat> you doing all that behind your girl's back and cheating and doing all that mm-hmm. nigga that's that's just holding your, your that's holding your blessings back mm-hmm. you understand what i'm saying so right i'm just like everything that you do is seen by god at the end of the day too bro yeah. it's like nigga don't just don't do it right. or just break up or do something right. but yeah that's i yeah. think that was my main thing too it's like if i'm not gonna snitch on my homie in court i'm not finna cheat on my girl <sighs> wow that's a bar right there because i'm closer to right. my girl than my you're, homie you're right it's and the loyalty factor in it too is like it says a lot about somebody too you know what i mean like um i think the most important quality in a woman is is her loyalty yeah i think like everything else everybody makes superficial and yeah that's like in popular culture but 
it's like bro there was mad times that my wife could and should have left my ass yeah like the the value of woman she is yeah but uh the fact that she stayed loyal it's like it made me want to like come on bro let's get this together you know what i mean be, yeah. be a good man like you need to sharpen it up here straight up it's it's a harder route to take oh it's to, it's, it's you know it's, what i mean yeah you either go with it or you don't yeah you can't run from it forever because the more you run from it you're gonna end up just doing nothing exactly it's fulfilling it's what we should be as men we should be savage warriors that are controlled and loving yeah that's what we should be you know since apocalypto nigga yeah straight up (laughs) 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 or you in that era you would be right there i'm done look you feel me oh it's war chief yeah two braids hanging like a war chief nigga that's uh so you're i know that you're native american right cherokee indian cherokee indian okay um and your name also derives from your your ancestry my cherokee indian uh roots yes and uh I think I saw you on an interview you were saying that it was like a war chief or like what does your name mean exactly? My name literally means light at the top of a hill. Light at the top of a hill. <sighs> so just Hard. like I'm not comparing myself to Moses or anything like that. I'm not comparing my compare myself to any of the twelve disciples or anything, but if you remember, it was um it was Moses and then remember he had the Ten Commandments mm-hmm. and he was at the top of the hill and mm-hmm. it was a huge light, you know, you had God speaking to him and things of that nature, but yeah. I felt like that spoke to me even if that's a biblical reference and mine is more of a native american reference it Mm -hmm. just resonated well with me and i felt like i have a voice and i have a platform Mm -hmm. so i could either use my platform for the betterment of the success of the people that are around me or i could use it to deteriorate the youth and cause them to make poor choices in life wow um so that i just took that i was like what yellow hill that's bigger than anything wow it could have been a hood name it could have been a little this little that but yellow hill is like Mm -hmm. to me it's the most uh i'll die about that name it's powerful it's powerful i feel like i'm a prophet you know i feel like you know what i'm saying yeah have you always felt like that like since you were like a kid and everything like different you know what i mean i felt like i was different yeah but I was a knucklehead too, so I was influenced a lot by the people around me. Even though I was a leader, I was also like a follower to a certain degree. Mm. When I was younger, younger, yeah. I was just like influenced by a lot of the things that were going around around me. Right. Um, if there were people over here studying, and then there was homies over here smoking weed and putting niggas on the hood, mm. I would kn- I knew the better decision to make. Mm-hmm. But I just I just it just I kind of seeped into the cracks of fucking with this. I see because it was just my youthfulness that had a more of a youthful exuberance to me yeah than that like it's more attractive to you at that of time of course i mean yeah. i'm seeing niggas studying in class quiet and shit i'm like that's boring me but the <laughs> niggas <all>. <laughs> but these niggas is chucks on they got yeah. the girls around them they got the drink cars right. pulling up they dancing this niggas crumping it's right. like it looks desirable to the eye so it was easy mm. for me to acclimate to wanting to be a part of this hood shit and wow. this fun shit and this worldly shit right. but when you get older you're like man that was bullshit mm. that really took a lot of years and that took a lot of months weeks and time yeah. off of my lifespan and like uh, off my experiences i'm glad i experienced those things because it hardened me up and made me a warrior right you know like it gave me war wounds and uh it toughened me up fist fight wise and shit like that but i feel like mm. you know yeah this is where it was really at the whole time bro. wow wow <laughs> you know what i'm saying it was yeah it's it's an amazing uh journey bro like it's a blessing that you made it out and you and you're base you're flipping it around to the other sides of those things you know yeah the way i grew up is like is is the opposite of that and i've been realizing like as i get older that i i hadn't had the adversity that i i thought that i had growing up it just wasn't there you know what i mean like thank god that i had the the upbringing that i that i had i don't i don't mean to say like i wish i didn't yeah but at the same time like of course every parent wants to be able to like provide that kind of upbringing for the kid yeah everybody does but there's a there's a beautiful part in like having it rough growing up and going through hard shit and having to figure it out and like because that person could do one or two things it could it could literally be detrimental for that person where they destroy themselves and it's hard for most yeah. people, you know, but it could also make somebody into a, somebody like you, bro, yeah. who who goes through a hard ass time in life growing up. I can only imagine. And then you flip that shit all around and you're positive and you are successful. You make, you, yeah. you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, lately I've been realizing, though, like 
I need to tap into that savage side. That's why I've been I've been really interested in trying to learn how to fight, like get into the yeah. cage and do all that. Yeah. I need that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. It's Hell important. Yeah. I think know? it's an amazing thing, bro, for yeah. real. Um, the way that you would do it would way, be way more in a positive aspect. Obviously, you would go to like a controlled setting right. and like be able to spar and shit, and you would learn. That that's like the way I wish I did it. But like, yeah. I think the way that happened for me is just like nigga just getting fucking punched in the face. Yeah, <laughs> and it's up. like okay, that doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And I gotta cover up. Right. And then right. learning that you can't just cover up. Mm. You gotta swing too, right? And then learning how to swing, right? And then okay, this works for me. This is my technique: mm. getting my ass beat and then beating the niggas. <laughs> but I feel yeah, try. I've been in too yeah. many. F I mean, like yeah, I have a, this this knuckle right here. You seen this? Yeah. Have you seen this? How it's like? You see this? Now yeah. this is all fucked up. I haven't seen that before. Okay, actually. so this is like regular knuckles. Okay. But if you look at this right here, this is a little bit bigger and it's off. Oh, but you broke your knuckle? Basically? Yeah, like off of a nigga's face, and I was like. <sighs> And then you got this right here where I was squabbling, and then you got, and this is like stab wounds. Oh, damn, in the hand? Yeah, right in the hand. I was just oh. like, oh, cuz. Like you caught it almost? Yeah, like it was like when I was trying to like, oh, yeah, you like understand get, what get I'm it, saying? Get it off, yeah. But that's just like only a couple of the war stories. Right. And then getting jumped, but it's like, I feel like I like, it, it, it was good for me, mm -hmm. because now in situations, now being my age, mm. I ain't looking for no trouble or anything. Right. But I know how to react now. Right. And I, and getting punched in the face or mm. falling or breaking something and shit, that shit ain't, it, it, it's, it won't phase me as much anymore. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. It won't phase a nigga. I'll be like, all right, bet. Well, shit, that's whatever. Right. I know what it feels like. <laughs> Bro, and that's a good place to be, I think, you know, because yeah. it's, I mean, I think about these things as I get older too. Like one, I want to walk around and make sure that my wife feels 100 percent safe everywhere we are my kids 100 percent safe everywhere we are and that takes certain things you know it takes oh, yeah it takes like learning how to be able to defend but like like you said the the fear of it is like removed from you sure. because you've you've done this how, however many times yeah, yeah and th yeah, yeah. that whole thing is, is taken away yeah so it's like for me actually bro the f i actually got punched in the face the first time for like a couple months ago oh fuck and, and, but it did the same thing for me in a sense like it, it removed that veil of like oh okay like all right cool i got it, I mean, su it sucks it sucks yeah it hurts <laughs> <laughs> I'm, i met this that nigga said all right cool. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. but like bro i feel like there's a lot of men who like like for me i didn't yeah. grow up and engage in that shit so i don't know what it is and it's timid like i don't know how that's gonna go down so there's like a fear of the of the conflict. Unknown. Uh, yeah, exactly. What if this nigga hits me and I'm yeah. like something happens? I don't right. know. Yeah, I, I don't know. But then it's like, then finally I met this uh, fighter in the gym. I met a few of them actually at uh, yeah. at Gold's gym, and I told him I was like, bro, I want you to sock me in my face. Like I want to spar and I like don't take it easy. Like I want you to just go in, right? And he punched me right in my nose. <laughs> And but but we were trying like yeah. what's crazy is you he, just let him do it but no actually I, he was like okay but we're gonna like try to spar a little bit like let's see what you got because i i've i like hitting the bag and stuff and training yeah. boxing but i've never engaged yeah and bro it was it was so humbling because he used to like be a pro fighter he used yeah. to fight and everything yeah and uh he just he cracked me boom right down the pipe and i thought oh, i was the like water came out your eyes boom, just you know like i actually got hit in the face with a basketball stuff like that it was similar oh, yeah, when you're a kid yeah, boom it feels almost the same yeah it's just you know it's a fist yeah 100 percent. and i was just like man and bro with all my might yo try to hit this man in his face and just imagine you swing as hard as you can just air just miss, miss. yeah his head is just and it was so humbling bro i was like wow there's really levels to this but, yeah, I, yeah, but yeah, i'm yeah. glad i'm glad that finally like yeah the veil got because at removed. that point you're fighting with just like emotion that and it's like i i related it in the moment i was like i grew up as an athlete so i'm like right okay this is competition now yeah yeah like, yeah let me get in my yeah. athletic bag let me yeah. get good yeah you yeah. know i don't want you to touch me i want no, i want to like, no, no, you know what i mean yeah so yeah bro but you know, i feel you i feel you yeah that's the next step for me it's I a humbling experience there. for sure yeah but that, i mean you're doing it professionally so that's 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 like that's the way to go nigga because yeah. you're going to be overachieving anybody at this point you know what i'm saying people that are in the gym can really fight niggas in the gym mm -hmm. if you go to the gym you could pretty much pick up any street fight not that you'd want to right but if you're at the mall or the movie with your kids or your wife yeah just you don't know bro right there could be a drunk guy saying hey who's this fucker with the black on man who do you think you are yeah. like just whatever All right i hate you look at your pants like like bro my pants are fire and then you can kind of look <laughs> to him and be like back up bro I'm with yeah. my family yeah like, but you know you're saying that confidently exactly. knowing that nigga 
I could fuck you up badly, and it could get end up really bad. Walk yeah. away, right? And then if just so happens he just he's drunk and he swings at you at the AMC, it's a wrap. Whoosh, boom, yeah. bing. Oh, your kids yeah. are seeing that. Yeah, you don't want them to see violence, but right. now they see. Okay, my dad is a protector. Do of you us. know how fucking how good it feels to just have your kids see you just whoop some ass? You don't have to like brutally beat anybody up. You don't want to like traumatize them. Right. But a quick little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, your girl seeing that? Right. Oh man, it's a wrap. She loves you forever after that. <laughs> oh, it's just like, oh, my boyfriend's not a fucking. Because you know what I'm saying? Yes. There'd be situations where yeah. it's just like you never know. All right. So, yeah, there'll come a time for that. Just not all the time, but just maybe. Especially if you're going to be married, nigga. Yeah, you're bro. Just, I mean, you're going to go through life with this person, 100%. so they're going to see every side of you one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's just up for you to just rise to the occasion, nigga, right. or let it fucking swallow you up. Exactly. Yeah, that's the the crossroads I came to. Like, okay, look, I can't be a grown ass man and be afraid, <laughs> afraid, afraid of conflict, afraid to engage with somebody with another grown man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I no. gotta go in here tactically, like, like you said. Yeah. I want to walk around confidently, and not looking for shit. I don't care. I don't even like it to begin with. Yeah. But I want to walk around and be able to be like, okay, tell this man, like, hey. I don't want to do this with you because it's going to end up bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, you want to do Batman on it. Yeah, it could be a jujitsu. It could be I learned how to throw leg kicks. Like, we could take it. I'm literally a UFC fighter walking around. Yeah. That's a crazy feeling as a man. That's nuts. Yeah. How do you feel about Nobody wants to fuck with you. Yeah, no, straight up. up. (laughs) And on top of that, I want to add probably some like tactical. Basically, I'm trying to become a Navy SEAL without having to go to the military. That's dope. You know what I mean? That's dope. Nobody fucks with the Navy SEALs. Nobody fuck. Nobody wants to fuck with them. No, no way. No, you probably won't even. I know mean, it. niggas have more so respect for them. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm if I'm get, if I'm getting in going I'm going back and forth with a Navy SEAL at a bar. I'm gonna be like, bro, you got it. <laughs> you know, it's a smart not that move. I'm not afraid. Not that I'm afraid, but it's more so like, first of all, it's respect because you're serving the country. Mm. Thank you. I'm glad that you view that that way, bro. You're thank, serving thank a country that. that I'm I'm not fighting for this country. I'm fighting in this country. That's beautiful, bro. I'm having civil wars with people in it. You yeah. you're going out and risking your life for me. All right. So nigga, unless you're like <laughs> like being a belligerently drunk and mean. Right. Like and calling me racial slurs. Right. Then I'm gonna fuck you up. It's a different story. Regardless if you are a gargoyle, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but but for the most part, nah, nigga, like if I had a conflict with a Navy SEAL or an Army bill, I'd be like you know, brother, you're right. It's all good. Yeah, respect. Just like, nigga, you, you, you're doing a lot for us. Thank right. you for your service, bro. That's amazing, bro. I ain't tripping. Yeah. It's so weird that a lot of people don't see it that way with service people. That's crazy. You know? Do you that's think, crazy. Do you think that that's the case? Like, I feel, I like, feel like we more so have a civil civil war, like civil disagreements going on with the police. For sure. Police is different, mm. you know? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's good cops out there. I ran into some cool cops. Like, a nigga pulled me over. I had weed. When I, when I used to blow, I had weed blowing in the car. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think my, my car was, my, I had my speakers up, and I didn't have a license. He was just like, man, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> like a homie. <laughs> That's no. <laughs> I said, bro, I said, I'm trying to get back to the house, bro. He's like, cars, you, you not registered. I mean, you got marijuana blowing, blowing in my face. <laughs> I mean, you're driving around here recklessly like a chicken with a head cough. Just, just get out of here, man. For one of my buddies catches you. This is stupid. Take the back streets and get the fuck out of here. Whoa. Amazing. Shout, shout this out to that guy. This was in Highland Park. Shout too. out to that guy. Yeah. And I said, in my mind, my mind said, what? Right. But to him, I said, thank you. I appreciate that. Right. And he was just like, yeah, man, that's, and that's the stuff. Get some better weed. <laughs> There's cool cops that you know. It's it's interesting about about that too. Is like the ones that go in and they have life experience where maybe they did some bad shit or like lived the life, and then they became a cop. Right. That's different. Or even even better, it's like you know coming from a, a community that needs cops that are from the area, which I know is probably we can get into this because I don't know really much about hood politics and stuff like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Maybe you could help me out a little bit with that. Sure. But I just feel like. It would be a good idea to have like a representative of of the area, but then I don't know how that. What coincides. do you mean, like uh, in in like say for instance, somebody who grows up in the hood, right? Sure. And and say they they don't take the route of doing any gang, gang like, yeah, gang yeah. right? But they they want to become a cop of the intention of po- oh helping po- the community, helping their community. Oh shit! Is I that mean, a conflict of interest because of the the gang related I mean, shit? You know what I mean? I mean, me 
me being a, a representative of the community revolution and progress organization mm-hmm. crip <laughs> um like we like naturally politically speaking we obviously we don't fuck with police at all all right we don't fuck with them niggas bro like we just don't i'm pretty sure though there may be some people that are like okay with that i'm open-minded at the end of the day like if say i had like a homie that would wanted to turn to do some shit like that like just a friend right um and he and his intentions were to protect and serve the community right do your thing bro i'm not going to discriminate against that Mm. um i'm not going to discriminate against that and shit like that it's just like but me being where i'm from and who i am right the organization i put i could be as open-minded and brilliant as possible and i can and i can understand yeah what you're doing right um, just like you said, politically speaking, though, it's just like mm. I really can't have nothing to do with you, right? Right, right, right. You know, I just you, you understand what I, I'm saying because I'm understand. a brilliant nigga, right? I understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, mm-hmm. but it's just like um, you have loyalty at the end of the day. I have loyalty to the set, nigga. Just, this is the hood forever. I got it tatted on me. I've been through this shit too much. I don't had homies die, do time for it, yeah. policed and ran up in niggas' houses. So I'm like, uh, just. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can understand what you're doing over there, but um Yeah, man, it's just it just boils down sometimes it just boils down to the politics. Yeah. Politically speaking, it just it just obviously it wouldn't work, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what so do you think that there's a role in um in like a gang like policing their own area? Is that you know what I mean? Would that uh, be accurate? Like the people in the area. You know what I mean? That's what it that's what it started as. Really? Like yeah. not policing, but like really like protecting the community, like community re- community revolution and reformation and progress. What, is, was, what does that mean? So yeah, Crips are basically community community guards. Okay. Okay. So it started as <coughs> say it was a lady walking down the street. Yeah. And she was on Washington and Marvin. Mm-hmm. And she, we we know her, and we know that she lives down the street. And she has her bags with her and she's walking up the street and stuff like that. She maybe had three blocks to go. Mm-hmm. My duty being a part of the community and being where I'm from, being from the hood that controls that area, me being a crip, I'm community revolution in progress. I'm going to make sure that she gets home safe. Mm-hmm. I'm going to maybe follow her home and make sure that she gets there. <clears throat> if I'm driving, I may pull up on her right. and drop her off. Um, if there's a corn man and then there's people like antagonizing him or trying to do something to him, the Elotero mans or something like that. A lot of that this past year. It's weird. We get into that. Yeah. um, Yeah, continue. I'm going to pull up. We're going to whoop the niggas' asses Mm. and get them up out the area. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, protecting the community. That's that's what uh, Crip started from. It started from like protecting the community. That's what my OGs was doing. Mm. Making sure everything was under control. Families had turkeys. Families had... um, things to eat Love that. there were there were um, give backs schools that's what being a crip to me that's why that's why i love being a crip because it's like that's what i still live by i want to make sure people are right i see in the community if it's a little girl walking down the street and i know her mom isn't home and she's walking i'm going to keep an eye on her she's part of my community mm. crip yeah. yeah you feel me she's not a crip i'm a crip you I feel see. me so it's like yeah. almost being like a guard like a stormtrooper say a stormtrooper was walking around the millennium falcon right and um you know, Darth Vader's not around and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And then you see like the city goers of Tatooine. You you want to make sure that the city goers of Tatooine are everything is okay with them because you are policing that area because you're a stormtrooper that controls the city of Tatooine. Yeah, I see. You know, I'm gonna. I'm not, <laughs> you know I'm, what I'm saying? I, I'm not even gonna lie. Like I have I really don't know nothing much about Star Wars, but I understand. Oh, you don't the know reference <laughs> of what you're saying. I can't even say. Nigga, it, like, I'm, I'm telling you, know I can talk about. It. I'm a nerd. I know everything. I know. I know. It's yeah. amazing. Like he's like, nigga, I don't know what the fuck yeah. Tatooine. You know, it's crazy. Like I, I never. I think I watched Star Wars maybe like one time, like with my dad yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. But I just never, bro. Honestly, I never watched like movies or shows or anything like that. But it yeah. sounds like you you grew up like with a lot of that. Nigga, yeah. everything. Yeah. You said Power Rangers. I used to watch Power Rangers. Ninja Fire. Turtles. I watched the mo- unpopular shit, the popular shit, the mainstream shit, the underground shit. Yeah. Nigga, everything. <laughs> From Hey Arnold to Hokey Pokey Bear to nigga to S- shit you wouldn't even hear about. That's hard. Yeah. Everything, cuz. I watched, I played everything. Nigga lived normal lives and shit like that. Yeah. A lot of people, like, maybe they don't think all that stuff when they when they relate to it. You know what I mean? Or yeah. Or relate the two. They conflate the two as if, like, it's, like, not just... 
a human being at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, geez, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, you mean like if they see a nigga that's like a West Coast? Yeah, or, or somebody who's a gangbanger. Like, they're like, oh, you he probably doesn't know what Battlestar Galactic is. Exactly, says. yeah. Yeah, he's, he's an ignorant uh, uh, gang member. Stereotypes. Yeah. It's like, nigga, little do you fucking know, right. nigga, I know everything right. and more and of I'm what brilliant. you're talking about. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. It's interesting, though, because like, and and don't mind me for my ignorant questions, if they Fuck are. No, I just, good. I don't know. I'm curious. You know what I mean? No, so it's bro, like, you good. Yeah. I appreciate you like telling me the history. So it's it's an acronym. It's uh, Community. Community Revolution, Revolution in Progress. Revolution in Progress. So we all about Whoa. the community. That's crazy. That's where it started at. Now, you got a lot of niggas that just got mm. put on. Right. What does that mean? Put like on. Like they got put on the hood. Like they jumped got, in. Okay, it's like initiation. They got initiated in the hood. Okay. That's how it like, works. I mean, just to just for a look, for really? Instagram or something, oh. or to be like, yeah, I'm from the hood. yeah, cause I'm. Uh, you go to the hood, you know, just shit like that. I see. I see. So it's not with the same intention that Fuck you no. explained to me. When I was younger, yeah. like, I mean, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wasn't thinking. Um, I wasn't thinking to help the community either. You were I was more so yeah. nigga just this where I'm from I'm getting put on the set these is the homies nigga mm. if we go to jail we go to jail nigga if we nigga get popped that we popping back like I was just thinking like that more so on some gang banging shit right but when I started getting older and l- listening to the morals and teachings and studying my roots of Raymond Washington and the niggas that started the whole infrastructure of the crypt organization yeah. nigga I was like okay right I'm way more proud to be a part of this now right almost like getting initiated into um getting initiated into a um a masonic a, a, a fr- freemasonry mm, yeah and you're like yeah i just want to be a freemason because everybody has money and woo, 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 woo. Mm-hmm. and then when you finally sit down you're like all right well i'm a freemason I'm, all these are my freemason friends and then now you start to indulge into the literature and you see like who are the founding fathers of this specific lodge mm. abraham lincoln was here like then you're like, oh fuck! Now I'm really happy to be from here. It was more so one of those, nigga. I I I was ignorant with it. I was like, nigga, this crypt, this the homies, nigga. Fuck them. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's how it starts for a lot of people? Hell, I mean, yeah, yeah for yeah. a lot of for sure. It's either you doing it for that or you doing it to be cool. Mm. I didn't do it to be cool. It wasn't fashionable to me because I was banging even before rap. All right. You know what I'm saying? I was I was um. Yeah, it's I I've been banging before rap, so it's like, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I didn't care, nigga. I didn't give a fuck. This is what it was. I was with the homies just that was my that was my that was my habitat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, we was just hyenas in the elephant graveyard, nigga. Damn. That's a Lion King reference, right? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I got one. Even though I didn't you watch didn't any movies. You know about Star Wars, Cub, no. but you know about the motherfucking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it's just because I saw, like, the recent one, like, that Beyonce, like, they did the the, vo- the music. Oh, one. that was, was that okay? But it, you got to watch Lion I, I haven't King. watched the original, which is trash of me, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of it. <laughs> no? No, of the, the original. You talking about, like, the cartoon? Well, the original one is a cartoon, right? Yeah, the original is a cartoon, but, but this, one Beyonce is like the new animated type yeah. of vibe. So that one's like, ah, they shouldn't have redone it. No, fuck no. Yeah, got you. I like yeah. I like Disney too, man. I go to Disneyland. I like Ichabod and Mr. Toad. I like like the 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 shit nobody fucks with. I was about to say, what is that? It, what? Ichabod, <laughs> Ichabod, the uh, Ichabod is a, is a story about Sleepy Hollow. You know Sleepy Hollow? No. Oh shit, cause I'm culture just, me, bro, Please. nigga. I mean, it's just it's just it's just. <laughs> It's funny fairy tale shit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? To get into detail, you just look at it. It's easy, bro. It's like about a little toad, and <laughs> then it's scary, and the toad goes to hell. And Oh, damn. Then Yo. you got a headless horseman that's chasing a nigga that's skinny with a long nose that looks like me. Oh. it's There's a lot of shit, bro. Jeez. It's fucking insane. Yeah, Disney gets in their back. Disney is yeah, dark. It is dark. Why, are they, why do they do that, you think? Do you think it has actual attachments to dark shit, Satanism, blah, blah, blah? I feel like anything with a lot of money may have certain attachments to it i feel like money is the root of all evil i feel like not everything but there's been imagery and shit like that where you can like go into encrypted like disney when you digest disney and shit like that and stuff like yeah nigga they got some shit that's kind of weird they do they got some shit that looks like the devil himself with horns that's chasing mickey 100 percent. and his name is the demon like it's weird Yeah, yeah so yeah. It's weird that they do that. But With kids like, watching it? Well, yeah, but the, I think the intention is like, like if you dive deeper into the whole like satanic realm, like there's there's a definite intention of like putting this specifically in front of the eyes of children. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Because it's, it's like, 
it's the easiest way to 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 kind of indoctrinate somebody is like as a young person i think you know yeah put and it in fucking mickey yeah and it's subliminal and of course it's like you know what, what's what's interesting about evil things is like it always is a is, appears to be the good for the masses yeah and if you speak out against it you look like the crazy one right right. you know what i mean yeah like if you were to say like this is bad this is evil yeah and you were like amongst the crowd of all the people were like how is disney how is mickey mouse right they would get offended exactly disney freaks would be like what how dare you yeah yeah um strange in the beginning of sleeping beauty there's like a there's a scene where there's like a a, i don't know what you would call a squadron of knights yeah what do you call it like a battalion of knights okay yeah there you go yeah battalion of knights and they're all like in their silver just like in their chain links and their armor yeah yeah, normal right and they all have like the silver on yeah and then indirectly in like one of the scenes i feel like it's 15 or 20 seconds into sleeping beauty there's like this one night that you can't see when you're a kid you probably wouldn't even see it Hmm. he's all the way to the left of the tv like right in the corner all red horns like this and you don't see him anywhere else in the sleeping boot in, in sleeping beauty at all whatsoever you just see him in that one scene oh and then it's just it just and then you see other dark things obviously like right maleficent and all that shit but in the beginning they like they put it right in your face Boom. right if you've seen selena it's crazy the movie with uh j-lo yeah she's standing in front of like a whole star pentagram like that whole weird you know the star yeah. she's standing literally in, in the it. middle right in the middle and it's not like a regular star I'm not like you know you know how people are just like oh like they just try to make up conspicuousness it's like a satanic pentagram literally she's standing in it and I'm like what I know so there's like imagery everywhere where they try to do it I feel like so I'm just like I'm just like I rebuke you Satan in the name of Jesus yeah I love that bro 100% yeah I try to I try to keep myself uh, protected as much as I can because yeah. it, it is a, a reality. It's like yeah. we're we're definitely in war all the time. Yeah, all, and it's I know a lot of people don't believe that you know, but if if you really understand like the context of the spiritual world, it's just like bro, at all moments you're like under fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. This thing that I have on right here, yeah, it's called a um, geez, why am I forgetting the name of it now? It's called the Saint Benedict Medal, Whoa. right? And so um this uh saint benedict was a monk and he basically lived by himself in like a cave this happened a lot with like um just like that older time period in like with catholic saints and everything right 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 but um so he was very very holy man and um there was i think like a monk nearby and or, or there was like a a group of monks nearby what is it called it's called a monastery yeah there's a monastery nearby and these monks were aware of who this man was right and, and he was known to be like a very efficacious person meaning mm-hmm. like his prayer was powerful he's a very holy man he's very strict with himself right um so they sought him out and they they actually asked if he would come and like teach them yeah their yeah. like his ways basically he literally all he did was lived by himself and battled satan that was his life that's insane that was his whole existence right that's insane um so he he actually warned them he's like you guys are going to turn on me because i'm going to be too hard to live with i I live too tough and you can't handle it basically he's what he told them and they were like no 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 like we we can handle it this and that they convinced him so he went to go live with them and to teach them like his ways basically and uh after a while the men conspired against him to kill him actually and uh it got to that point where they couldn't handle it he was too strict like he called it and they all basically grew envious and everything like that and uh they grew they drew up this plan and they were gonna kill him they were gonna poison him actually yeah so there's this like uh famous story where they're all at this long table and they're about to eat supper and uh they poison his wine right and before every meal you bless every meal that's what he would always do before before he would eat right so they're about to eat and they're all like watching him to see if he's going to do it and he makes the sign of the cross over his food and then he blesses himself and the glass of wine poof, explodes literally explodes and he gets up and he walks out and he goes and leaves and he blesses them before blesses all of them. that was god that helped him right there bro blew up the glass of wine and poison right so uh basically like he's he's very well known for for fighting off temptation uh specifically temptation so um pretty much every catholic exorcist 
yeah. has a Saint Benedict medal. Like the efficacy of this medal is specifically to keep you protected. Like oh, that's dope. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's crazy. Crazy that's story, insane, right? bro. That's that's yeah. like I pre- obviously had no idea. Yeah, you just educated me on some on some uh, some super cool religious right some religious shit right there, man. That's dope. Yeah, Petros is my kid, man. <laughs> I'm his kid. We're like brothers, <laughs> man. That's insane. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I know you guys were making music during that time period with Moog. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, bro, do you remember that night that we met? That first night at Moog. Yeah, I do. What was that like for you? I remember you coming in. Okay, you were. You were either coming in or you were already cooking. Mm. I came in. Yeah. I think vi- vibes were. Um, they were Moogy. Because we, we, what I mean by that, because a lot of people won't know that, that's like a secret society that we had. Yeah, for sure. Um, Mo just had this presence about it. It was such a special, just like vulnerable and transparent and just loving and kind vibe going on in that studio. It for was sure. ridiculous. It was, um, I feel like you got everybody's good side in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it, naturally running into you there. I don't know what it was about that space, but it was that spacing. But it was it was a pleasure meeting you though. Just to like dive into that, it was um, it was dope, bro. I mean, and, and immediately, yeah. Uh, my favorite people. I mean, just like you, I feel like I don't know if you know Cade like that. Not really like that, but I know who, I know who he is. Yeah, love that nigga. All right, because I already knew Petros. You did? Yeah, yeah, I already knew Petros. Well, because I, I met him before I met you guys. I didn't know that. Yeah. You but Cade, like, Cruz, and you is just like I was just like, oh fuck, yeah. These niggas, I love these niggas. Yeah. And then Phil was like yeah. the <laughs> icing on the cake, nigga. Like he was, just, it was, it was so intoxicating being around these people. It was such a beautiful time, bro. Mm-hmm. I can't really name another time after that where I felt that vibe again. Right. I felt like it was with the Moog staff, the Moog people mm-hmm. from Ivy to Forest, all of them. I love them. And then before that, I think that high school was like when I really felt wow that unity and togetherness. Because you got to understand, I was gang banging a lot. Mm. So you around a lot of just yeah yeah nigga. We about to go to the store and shit, nigga. Negative, like yeah yeah. Where are these niggas at? Like yeah, got you. So so yeah. like high school was just like pure. Then it went to like. <laughs> And then it got to you guys and stuff like that. So, yeah, not to not to float off into that that huge that dark abyss, not that dark abyss, but in like in a black hole of that or sure. rabbit hole that situation. But yeah, uh, meeting you was just amazing. It was it was dope, bro. To like to like let me dissect that part right there. It was amazing, bro. It was a Thank pleasure you. for sure. Thank and then you, the bro. music was just like I'm like what? Yeah. Did I meet you when you were with Keanu? Was that? I think so. You got and then he was outside playing some music for me. Two Hawaiians. <laughs> Yo, he's really, really Hawaiian. Lilo and Stitch ass nigga. I say that because, like, yeah, technically, yes, it is my ancestry, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. But this man, yeah, for real. (laughs) That's cool, right? That's that's not nobody be mad at me. No, hell no. Okay, yeah. I feel like people trip on that too much. People oh, people fucking, do too much Hulu-ing. with that. We don't always do that. People, ah, people do too much with that. I really think so. You yeah. Know? But uh, Keanu, bro, like straight up, like real, real Hawaiian. Grew up on the islands. You know this type of nigga. Yeah, it's different. Rocket you know? Power character. <laughs> <laughs> nigga look like Lars <laughs> from Rocket Power. Nigga, the tall nigga. <laughs> do you notice their accents? Like Keanu's accent. I've never heard the nigga talk. Oh, you're right. It's very, very observant and quiet. He is. That's his character. He does not bit. talk. I know. When you probably, when you get with the nigga though, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'd have been around that nigga, around a bunch of niggas, and he'll just, I'm like, what's up, bro? He's like, oh, yeah, what's up? I'm like, nigga, <laughs> I didn't know what your voice sounds like, bro. I don't even know what your voice sounds like. Right, right. Um, but his energy is amazing, though. Yeah. yeah. Very, very calm, very collected. All these people are just the culture is just uh it's beautiful bro it's like uh you know when you just share those simil like similarities culturally you yeah. know what i mean because you're uh you're black and you're mexican right yeah. so culturally it's like you can dip into either one of these things and feel the camaraderie between oh definitely yeah. definitely yeah i kind of have the same thing a little bit yeah like my dad is mexican my mom's hawaiian so i could tap into like 
both sides of it and feel like yeah the energy from it you know what i mean yeah 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 yeah, for sure yeah those days were special bro those those mo days man meeting you was bro you know what's crazy is um when you walk in the, when you walk in a room like the first time you walked in a room i understood immediately like oh okay like this person is different you know yeah. what i mean like this is a this is a different it's like a big magnet yeah you know what i mean just naturally some people have that where they just they go anywhere and everybody's just all eyes on you bro yeah attention you know what i mean just drawn to you naturally but i just was thinking to myself like after i heard your records in the room like this dude is a star yeah this is a different level you know what i mean no for real for real like it's a different understanding when you hear it at the place where it's at right. it's a special thing right. because from there I already knew at that time like he's out of here he's out of here right now you know yeah. what I mean like it, do- it doesn't matter but for likewise, you likewise though but yeah thank you I appreciate that <laughs> Nigga, but your music is thank, fucking retarded thank you yeah when you told me that about, about that one project bro I, I literally after that phone call I was geeked up I was yeah. telling my wife I was like yo he he just told me this shit was fire and like gave, gave me a report of all these songs yeah. I kept it cool on the call I was like thanks bro <laughs> that's how it be bro that's how i be sometimes with people yeah. too with motherfuckers i get out though i yeah. get out after i was like yellow told me that it was the fly yeah, 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 yeah you know what i mean yeah but you know what i love about uh about making music with you is that we have this um we have this dynamic that i always viewed as kind of like what pharrell and snoop did during that beautiful era that they're just you know it's because like you you make west coast gangster rap that's bag i know that you know what i mean it's like you get that off but i always knew as soon as i heard this i was like i want to put him in a space where this shit is just so different it's just different i want to hear his vocal on something that nobody would ever ever think of it you know what i mean because that's what this is and i understood that you wanted that or at least that's what i thought i was like he, he probably wants to get past this box of like just hard west la rapper like that's that's amazing i i mean no disrespect by that but i'm just saying like for you to do something like extremely artistic outside yes. the box yes. outside the back that moog era was that because it was just everybody was just throwing sun it. scott yeah right sun scott you remember him yeah 100 yeah my he guy. had me on some show, like a campfire type song right Back, it's backwards. It's a song called Backwards. I remember that. I hopped on some shit with Forrest called Avocado Toast. I yeah. mean, they broke me out of the they broke me out of um, the normalcy of what my fans ac- say is the best music that I make. So yeah, yeah, man, yeah. it was dope. You broke me out of that shit. It was a pleasure. It's 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 crazy, bro. What was the reaction from your uh, fans for that? And were you were you worried about that? Were you thinking about that? Like releasing that kind of music? You know what I mean? No, I feel like maybe in the beginning I was just like, would they fuck with this? Yeah, but you have fans that like different things. For sure, you have fans that like um, the super fly shit, the West Coast shit, the chill shit. Yeah. So I just knew that it was gonna go to one of my fan base demographics. I just knew that somebody was gonna eat that shit up. Right. I didn't know who. I just know who it was. Yeah. So I didn't really get too scared. Right. I see. Yeah. Because you have, I'm sure you you think about like this core group of people. Yeah. You kind of know more or less what they're looking for right. from you. Right. Right. But. Uh, you're not afraid to step outside Fuck that box no. and just boom, like less on the rock. Do whatever. That's hard. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, bro, you're the kind of like artist that's just gonna be iconic to people. Yeah. It's not. It's way past the music. Right now, it's past the music. You know yeah. what I mean, bro? You're you're giving out juices to people. <laughs> like stop it, yo. He's him, yo. <laughs> he is too. You made a juice. Yeah. That is hard, bro. That is so crazy. And it's called, what is it called again? It's called Genie in a Bottle. Genie in a Bottle. Okay, where, where, where can people find it? Uh, so it's at Straight Up Fast Food. Straight Up Fast Food. We actually food. sold out of all of our units. <laughs> so I got to bring that shit back. It's of like, course. It's, and, and we have like some seasonal fruits too. Yeah. <clears throat> so it may come around every once in a while, but every time we put, we put them out, niggas is like, oh, I need it. I need it. Sometimes niggas just want it for the look. All right. Uh, a lot of the time you get the healthy people, but then a lot, of, it's tasty. All right. You know, and then you got niggas. I seen a, <laughs> a nigga about like three of them. And he had he had two bottles of Tito's, and then he had three of my drinks, <laughs> and he made the, a huge Tito's and Genie in a bottle and shit, and he shook it up, uh, and then he poured it, and he drank it, and he's like, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to the niggas that's mixing my shit in liquor. 
do whatever the fuck you want with it. Salute. Just enjoy it, nigga. Yeah. I want to try some, bro. I got you, nigga. I got <laughs> that, you. That's that, just bomb. It looks fire. Spirulina in it. Blue magic. What is that? Spirulina. Spirulina is a um. It's algae. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a natural supplement. It's natural nutrients. Yeah. From the ground, it's it's from from the sea and from the ground that are literally just like it pretty much heals everything like That's once crazy. you drink that shit like you don't feel it automatically like magic but it's if called you consist- spirit spirulina 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 crazy yeah name. s-p-i-r-u-l-i-n-a yeah That's so crazy. it's it's fucking yeah you would you would enjoy it though for sure but some people can't handle it because it does it does have like a it could have like a algae fishy taste to it in certain bottles oh that's my bag i love algae fishy taste <laughs> so 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 if you don't shake it but if you shake it you're good yeah. but if you just drink it you're supposed to shake it if you don't shake it yeah you're gonna be like what the fuck is this you probably won't like my drink honestly okay but if you shake it up yeah that's when you'll enjoy it the most and stuff like that and i feel like you get the nutrients that you need right. taste amazing yeah and niggas love it. You gotta shake the spirulina. Get the get the fish algae <laughs> all the get the, up in there. Get the fish I mean? odor out of that motherfucker, man. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That's so dope, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, it's a it's a blessing to be able to step into that market and stuff. So I'm gonna go hard. Um, early January, February, we're bringing them back. Right now, they're just fully sold out. Damn, bro. And um, what a blessing. Yeah, know? first week when they came out, it was just like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Right, right. So then I had to start like focus on music more and. Yeah. I'm like, well, now we see the, what, what the fuck we can do if the, if the bills aren't being paid. <laughs> <laughs> so you get these juices off. Because <laughs> it's, it's it's beneficial for both parties. Yeah. You help me pay my fucking rent, take care of myself, and then you get to fucking live longer. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shit. That's amazing. So what what's um, not next steps with, with career, but just life. Like, what is what would you say overall life goal? Like, what does yellow look like when you're 50 years old? Oh, let me see. What does that look like? Diplomatic immunity. Financial freedom. Generational wealth. Peace, happiness, love. Family picnics, oldies. Successful kids, future. Entrepreneurship healthy eating businesses and property wow you know what's so crazy about that moment that just happened right there uh <laughs> this is the same way i felt when i watched you pen manana in five minutes in front of me <laughs> <laughs> it's the same feeling yeah. I, I was amazed yo. i was like you know what wow it is. bro that, that i feel like that right there is yeah. literally oh of course i'm a, a relationship with jesus christ I like to get stronger but yeah that's it right that's there. Li- like that's oh, that's all that there is bro wow yeah that's all there is for me bro yeah. honestly i ain't tripping that's yeah. what i want i could see this at like uh at like 55 and smoking a cigar playing oh, golf yeah. like golf right here by the pool well, i'm gonna have my, i'm gonna have another pool this i was gonna time. say you're gonna not have this your, pool yeah, this pool's pool. nice but i'm the other pool here. yeah 100 yeah, yeah, y'all can't see yeah where we at really but yeah we at the casa de yellow hill man and you only invited if you a lucky mother sucker yeah, I am him. <laughs> Thank you for this. Yeah. Moog, if you're watching this right now, I miss y'all. I'm about to start stepping out soon. Ivy Forest, Keanu, Phil, Krush, Petros, Glasshouse, David Dan, Scummy Sunny. Mm-hmm. If I forgot you, I, you can slap me. Yeah. Don't do it though. It's not a good idea. Don't do it though, nigga. Because yeah. I'm not the nigga to slap. No, 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 no idea. The reach is very long. Also, I look at look at the arms. The length is I'm crazy. I'm Dalsum from Street Fighter. You don't know who that is either, bro. I'm so sorry. You ever played Street Fighter? <laughs> no, never. So there's an Indian nigga that's bald that does this that can stretch. His name is Dalsum. D H A L S I M. That's he a crazy stretch. name. He's like a Fantastic Four, but he's just Indian. He has skeleton things around him. So his jab is just he can get it off from crazy far. Spink stretch dab. That's no fair. You gotta immediately hit the canola, get inside. There you go. Yeah. You gotta kind of just work around it. But yeah, man. Shout out to the Moog and yeah. everybody. But yeah, let's keep let's keep, let's keep it going, man. Is he like the ultimate fool in that game, or like who's you know what I mean? So you know who Ryu and Ken are, right? I feel like I've heard the name Ryu, but you ever heard of Hi Yugen? Yeah, for sure. That's Street Fighter. Okay. Got so you. you got Blanca, Zangief, you got Zagat. Okay. 
You got Vega. I would hate that uh, name. Zagat. <laughs> <laughs> they give you the name. You got Zagat. you got E Hunt. <laughs> Zagat. And then and then you got uh, <laughs> Imagine your name is that, yo. Like you're born and Man. You're <laughs> bro. <laughs> you got you got bison. Bison. Balrog. Ball. <laughs> Who named these fools, yo? When you do this interview, if you have somebody edit it, yeah. When I'm saying these names, I'm just have it. them pop up. Okay. Have the characters pop up. Take your time with these interviews. Right. Like make pink, them animated. Pink. Pink. Okay. Right. It'll be Yeah. That'd be hard. Balrog. So, Balrog is a black boxer. He's supposed to be like he's supposed to be like a rec- second coming of Mike Tyson. Oh, okay. That's kind of fire. Yeah. I'm a fucking nerd, nigga. That's hard. I bro. love fucking video games yeah. and shit. If I, I could play video games forever, I would. I'm a nerd in, in ways too. Not the video game way, but just like random like facts. facts. I like history facts a lot. I also like to fish a lot. Like how polar bears can breathe underwater for ten hours. Whoa, ten hours? <sighs> Piranhas are allergic to peanut butter. What? How do they figure that out? Imagine. <laughs> Imagine just figuring that out. Like you Pigeons get are <laughs> actually rats with wings, literally. Because there was a bird called a pige and a rat that had sexual intercourse and created pigeon in the 1700s. Whoa, really? Ugh. No and wonder. these facts are all fake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look how gullible I am. No, I'm fucking with you. Imagine, though. <laughs> that should have be crazy, bro. You know what's crazy? Birds are just... Birds freak me out, bro. Honestly, birds are just like... So when I was younger, a pigeon flew inside of my mom's car when I was a kid, oh, and it was no. flapping. No. I no. have a fear of pigeons. I don't blame you. I understand. I think pigeons Fuck are dirty. Niggas. Yeah. Pigeon killer, nigga. Yeah, straight up. I used to kill birds a lot when I was a kid with a well, BB see, that's, gun. See, that's going a little far, but... You think so? I feel it. Yeah. Well, okay, like... Just shoot me some bail here. I, in New Mexico, it's boring. Yeah. Fools don't have anything to do. Yeah. Imagine, because you go up here, right? I understand shooting yeah. pigeons and shit. You're in the desert with, with, the, with the boys. You got the BB gun. Yeah. But that's all you have to do. Like, just go outside with your BB gun in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> no, for birds. sure. Yeah. I'd probably be doing the same shit. There's this one time, um, my dad, he was outside and he was like, he actually bet me that I couldn't kill a bird. I don't think he understood my, that my, shit my skills. I was like, does he know that I'm him that he's talking to right now? I don't understand. Like, well, he's asking me, like, okay, I'll go kill a bird. But he was <laughs> like, he's like, nah, you can't do it, blah, blah, Like, just, so, of course, like, I'm, like, nine, ten years old. And I'm like, okay, oh, bet. I had this dog named Spirit. We were homies. Only dog that I was, like, really, really locked Spirit. in with. Spirit. What color was it? Black? She was, uh, she was like, an Australian dingo-looking dog. You know what those, Like a shepherd dog, yeah, kind of? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like farmy, kind of? Yeah, or? yeah. But she had, like, natural uh, instincts to, to hunt. I think she yeah, was a yeah. hunting dog. Yeah. she would go with me, and uh, she would, like, get the things that I would kill. Or, yeah. or like... Um, we live like right behind this like big desert, bro. Yeah. So she would go on her own like all day. She'd be gone all day. Yeah. And then she'd come back with like a rabbit or like a bird or yeah. like, put it at my door like in front of my. Yeah. It was so sweet, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah she was yeah. telling me like I got you, bro. Like we're yeah. we're gang for real. Um, but I would take her with me to go in the desert. So when my dad told me, he's like, you can't you can't kill a bird. Like you're not a nice. Yeah, so you like, knock that shit back. I'm him. Let me get spirit. Boom. Bitch take spirit. Not him, but I'm saying yeah. Shit, I can do it. <laughs> I was actually a, a bird in the yard. He was standing on the rock wall, and I was like from the top of the the little patio that I was at, and boom, I hit it. And, Pigeon uh, or crow? It was uh, it was actually a dove. Was, oh, okay, okay. But not the beautiful dove that you probably think. They're like desert doves, right? People, Brownish. Yeah, they go. They actually, oh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah the brown yes, doves. Yes. Yeah, they just like all right. Yeah, they still like, pretty. They're God's creation. One hundred percent. Yeah, but you know, he taught me a, an interesting like lesson about this too. Is like. I don't know if he was drinking a few beers when he dared me. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> but but I, I ended up wounding it, and then it flew, like, to the ground, basically. And then I killed it, and I felt bad after. And then my dad, like, scolded me about it. And I was like, fam, you just told me to go kill a bird. Like, wh- I killed it. You know, I was a little boy. Yeah. But that was the time that he, he was like, he was like, he was like, no, nah, he got in his dad bag. Like, well, you can't be killing animals. I was mad confused. I was like, what? Nigga, you just told me. To. You just told me to go get, I kill it. He's like, all right. 
He's like, you want to kill stuff? You're going to do this the right way, blah, blah, blah. He's like, get that bird, pick it up. And I was like, no. Like, I didn't want to touch it, bro. It was all bloody and disgusting. I was like, geez, no, I don't want to touch this yeah. thing. I'm all, like, crying about it, like, touching it all scared. And he's like, we're going to go clean it. Come on. I'm going to show you how. I was clean like, it for what? We're going to eat it. Oh, my God. He's like, he's like, you're going to eat that animal that you just killed right in front of me. He's like, you're going to take a life. You're going to eat this right in front of me. Yeah, cook I'm it. I'm going to show you how to cook it. Yeah, I'm going to show you how yeah. to clean it. And I was like, no. Like, no, I didn't want to, bro. I didn't want to eat that bird. So anyway, he, take, he takes me to the front yard. And he freaking snaps the head off this bird. That's how you clean the dove. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I know we're getting in a wild bag. This is a yeah. the, the great podcast. You feel me? Yeah. Snaps the head off the bird, puts it in like a plastic bag, and he like breaks the chest open of the bird to like get the breast yeah. out, right? And he's like deep plucking all the feathers, and he makes me do all this, and I'm just like grossed out, bro. And he like took it to the backyard, turned the grill on, he like cooked it, and I sat there and I ate this bird yeah. in front of my dad. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you not playing? No, nah, bro. What do you think about hunting? Maybe before I was like, kind of like, fuck it, let's go get some elk. Yeah, let's go shoot. That shit was fun. I feel like it would still be fun now. I feel like more so. I have like an empathy towards like animals and shit. Cause like you feel me, like a bear. Like you have empathy towards a bear. Yeah, I mean, even though they're big and stuff like that, just like all God's creations, more so now, I feel like, I mean, you can ask my girl, nigga, like, yeah. before, I didn't give a fuck, like, nigga, I was a gang member, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, even with a bug, like, I would see a bug inside the house, my girl would be like, kill it. Oh, really? <clears throat> but you can ask her, like, I'll see it, and I'll get a paper towel, I'll get a, my hand, and I'll pick it up. Yeah. And you'll let it be outside? And I will literally wait until it crawls onto something outside. Wow. And then I will close it. I'm not killing a bug, huh? Wow. I'm not killing a spider. I, why, do, why, why do I have the right to take life of something I didn't create unless it's threatening me? Right. So if a nigga was threatening me, right. he's, done, he's done. Right. Boom, bang, you're done. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But why, would I, why, why do I have the right to take a life? That's something I didn't create, nigga. That's not my life to take. I didn't even give birth to that. That's interesting, bro. Yeah. I'm not going to shoot a deer, yeah. nigga. For, why would I do that? Yeah. That's a living being. I mean, if you... Okay, so this... If it's, it's, Okay, in this civilization, I don't think it's necessary. You're right. It's not. For back, most people. Back yeah. then. All right. Most people don't have to hunt for food. We back, have an excess of food. You're back right. then, if, if like... Yeah. If you needed it, like, if you, like, like back in the old times, like the Mayan and the Incan civilizations and yeah. Native American Indians... Of course, my nigga, you gotta eat. Go yeah. kill that shit. But right. if you can go to the fucking supermarket, yeah, or if you can buy duck hunt on fucking a game, duck hunt. I know about duck hunt. Yeah. What about a big buck hunter? You I like remember that? that. You like big? Oh buck yeah, hunter? I remember that. Yeah, remember the that. orange shotgun. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, big buck hunter. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That shit was fun. You can play it in the arcade or you can buy it at the house. Yeah. Cruz says he's really nice with that, but I don't know. I might have to, you know. Cruz, you full of shit, nigga. <laughs> You don't know how to play video games just, like that. Just like that. He can tag, though. You can tag, my nigga. Tag? What do you mean tag? Like graffiti. Oh, for real? Oh, he can get up. Wow. I was supposed to go tagging with that nigga back in the day. Yeah, it we sounds was, fun. We, okay, we made a song. It was off a of Rugrats beat. Fire. And he's like, let's go tag. And you tag, bro? I was like, yeah, <laughs> fuck it, man. Let's go get up then. Let's go tag or some shit. The sequence? You made a song off the Rugrats beat. I was mad at him for something. We got into a... <laughs> we got into a like, for not, real? You got into a disagreement, a civil disagreement. No, no, you know what? I brought, a, I brought something up to him that I was afraid of. I'm not afraid, but I brought up something to him that I was mad about. Okay. He said, man, let's make a song about it. We made a song with the Rugrats beat, and then we, went, we wanted to go tag. It was funny. Men are hilarious. <laughs> I feel like that's a great way to, stop, to solve the issue nowadays. Yeah, I'm 100%. Well, it makes sense that Cruz did that, too. It's like, he's like... He's that kind of person where he needs to channel all this into his art. Like, yeah. all of it goes into yeah. his music. He's like, bro, let's make a song about our beef right now. <laughs> he has a... Crush is hard. Like, yeah, 100%. Have you heard his song called... Um, it's unreleased. It's like something called Angel? I don't think so. Angel? No. Crush is crazy. Crush, why haven't you shared this unreleased... Fuck you, Crush. ...vault song with me? You my nigga. I love that fool. He's really interesting. We had a good pod. Nigga look like a biblical character. He does. Yeah. You know what he looks, looks like? like? He looks king. like a character that Zechariah or Ze Zechariah. Fuck. That's a hard name. I like that name. Zacchaeus or something. Somebody that was stuck in a tree or something. You <laughs> 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 no, you know Krush. Krush looks like. You ever seen Hercules, the Disney one? 
Yeah, one hundred percent. I love that. You movie. know the little blue nigga with the wings right here. Yep, <laughs> yep. Hate that fool. Icarus. That's cut or whatever cut. Yeah, whatever his name yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, bro. I love that movie. You know what's crazy? Yeah. Start of the pandemic. Um, we went. Me and my now wife went back to New Mexico for yeah. a little bit, and uh, I ended up watching that movie with my mom and with my girl at the same time. Yeah, bro. Because I used to watch it when I was a kid, and I would be like. I would get amped. Yeah. I would, I would just watch Hercules yeah. and get amped because, yeah. you know, it's the, it's literally the hero's journey. Yeah, 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 goes yeah. through the whole gauntlet. Shit's you know hard. I mean? Nigga, Hades, yeah. you got Poseidon, all that shit. Yeah, I sat there on the couch and I was just like all like, like emotional about it. Like, damn, my child, it's all coming like one, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Full circle. I'm here with my wife. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's beautiful. Nigga start yeah. crying. <laughs> 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 Nigga might start shedding a tear or something. <laughs> Uh, it's funny that like creatives are like that's just me, bro. What, like, what emotional? Yeah, it's weird. You know, it is. Men are emotional, bro, but we they take it out on on different shit. It's different than how they women. Got, the fuck, you yeah. don't understand? That's all emotion. All this red on pain and shit. Exactly. Right. It's all emotion. You know what I mean? But we tend to take it out more like aggressively. I think it's healthier to. I think it's healthy. Um, crying is healthy, cup. Yeah. For a lot of motherfuckers, if you gotta cry, cry, man. Sometimes I'll cry. You need a good one. I mean, I'll nigga cry to prevent from going to beat a nigga ass or something. I'll go inside the bathroom and cry, cuz. I don't care. That's hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I feel like if you if you confident in your manhood, or if you're count confident, obviously, it, in yourself as a per, as a person, as a human being, as a man, you can do whatever, nigga. Yeah. It's a good cry. I mean, it's emotional. It's natural human. Because if you hold that shit in, it gets worse. All of that emotion turns into anxiety. Anxiety turns to worry. Worry turns into to, to depression. Yeah. So, nigga, <laughs> fuck that. I'm cool on all that shit, nigga. If, if, if something hurts my feelings, right, right, then I will go express myself mm -hmm. on the dead homies. Yeah. Do, <laughs> how, what do you do that? Like, uh, where do you where do you express that? You know, myself. I mean? Yeah. Oh, like I mean, like say you're feeling like you said like you're, like you're if stress or overwhelmed somebody? problem in life whatever it is do you have somebody that you go to to, to tell that to or i'll like, talk to my girl yeah i'll talk to um i'll talk to my mom you know what i'm saying because I'll, I'll talk to people like that or mm -hmm. it just depends on what it is if it's a problem with somebody specific or something's bothering me about an individual person yeah then i would just express to them you hurt my feelings wow it's such a simple concept. You're right. But most people don't do that. <laughs> this is how I've seen it. This is how you've seen it. I right. understand where you're coming from, but you hurt me. Wow. Look at the growth, yo. <laughs> Not for real. <laughs> Not for real. That's hard, bro. I love that. I mean, unless a nigga yeah. being openly emasculating and trying to disrespect me and treat yeah. me like a bitch, then it's like, all right, because we're past that. Yeah. Line it up. Right. Yeah. I could show you where we can go. Right. You've been there, done that. It's but nothing. Yeah. More recently, if like if I have an instance with a homie or something like that, but like, bro. That's dope. That hurt my feelings. What's the problem with saying that? Right. People like have normalized the fact of like being too tough yeah. or being prideful. I don't give a fuck, man. If you care about that nigga. He's a weirdo anyways. <laughs> nah, nigga. That's your yeah. friend, bro. Right. You right. hurt my feelings. Yeah. And you're emotional about and it. And right I'm now. emotional about the situation. Right. So let's have a conversation about it before right. I before <laughs> yeah before it goes that into that we place. should talk about this before yeah. it turns into something serious yeah it's hard for people to, to talk me. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's hard, hard for people to talk because you're right you know it's a killer pride pride's a killer you know? and that yeah. toxic masculinity just kind of just poisons a lot of motherfuckers mm -hmm. so you won't even just express yourself to man i feel like nigga i'm so past that that stage of just having to prove myself yeah i feel like i'm stamped and approved yeah masculinity nigga nigga then did i'm a gladiator mm. i'd have been through being a gladiator right being a gang member is a gladiator 100 percent. you go to jail you got to squabble your enemies you out on the streets you got to keep a blower yeah. somebody busting at you got to bust at them somebody hit you up you got to tell them where you from so all of that toxic masculinity that i had mm -hmm. in pride right I already know myself. I know what I did, nigga. Mm -hmm. I don't have to prove myself to nobody and shit. I'm going to tell you how I feel. Right. And I'm going to be transparent with you. And I'd hope that you would appreciate and understand where I'm coming from. Right. How, what, how did that change start to happen with you, bro? That's a big just, change, you know? I feel like just constantly proving myself. Yeah. Understanding that proving yourself is a never-ending cycle of repetition. I see. Damn. 
being a bigger person and being like, let me handle it like an adult now. All right. It's better for your mental health and it and it um it prevents from it prevents um anything dangerous or harmful from happening or any destruction befalling the situation that you're coexisting with mm. with that uh, that with that other person. Right. Yeah. Cuz you've seen the other you've seen how this ends up. Every you've seen the darkest side of it, which is the violence of it. And you and you probably seen the destruction of of what that is because yeah. there's a point, right? It's it's like there's conflict and you push past that point to where there's violence and then it's detrimental for both people involved. Yeah. It's it's not it's just pride yeah. at that point, right? And then it's interesting to just see you like really understand the other side of it because arguably it's it's harder to walk that path of like restraining yourself yeah. when you know exactly what you're capable yes, of. Yes sir. Yes know? sir. Yeah. But that's what being a good man is. Yeah. Bro, a good that's I've heard this a few times and I, I agree with it, is it's like a good man isn't like soft, weenie, like nice. Blah, blah, blah. Nah. It's like it's like a man who is really capable of taking it to a level of violence and and has been there, but is controlled in it. Yeah, and control and is loving and it chooses to willingly s- prevent it. That's what you're doing. You know. I mean, yeah, it's you amazing. Could, yeah, you could kind of see it, like just how <clears throat> I kind of interacted with like the people that I'm around, like downstairs when we were downstairs, like yes, yeah, just humbleness and uh, it's respect, respect. Give everybody the respect that you want. Right. All that acting hard shit, man. That shit is. Yeah. That's for the county jail and shit. Damn. Yeah. Because that's gladiator mode. That's when it's like, all right, turn up, turn up your extras now. Yeah. Turn up your savage and shit. But I mean, and, and like now, it's like, bro, come on. Right. We already did that. You want to do that? That ain't about no money. Yeah. Exactly. I'm just, I'm just gonna stop my money flow from that. Right. Right. This just gonna be. It's just, I'm gonna be just be a broke nigga that's always getting into shit. Damn. The fuck is that? Yeah. So yeah. I consider myself a leader in my hood for sure. Yeah, I'm not the leader of it, but I consider myself a po- a good example of what to be from the hood. For sure. What it always seems like, uh, like OGs from these these situations, they speak what you're speaking of because yeah. they they go through the life experience of understanding, like, yo, this shit is not the way. No. And we did it, and we've been there, done that. But man, thank God they got out, and like, same with you. Thank God you made it through this path. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure, destined to be here and it's openly speak about it, bro. And yeah. just because I, I feel like kids are vulnerable, and yeah, they're, they're gullible, and like, it's there's probably a lot where people don't have a choice in a lot of situations yeah. too, you know. Like, say you grew up in that, and it's like, sure, you technically have a choice, but it's like, could you imagine the pressure on these people that oh, are man. that's involved? I mean, you, of course, you, yeah, you live that, you know, been so, through that, yeah. That shit is wild, bro. Yeah, that shit's a, that's a tough situation, bro. Right, and they get flashbacks from that shit all the time. <laughs> Damn, it's real. Yeah. <coughs> it's a real place. Yeah, one hundred percent. They use it in the movies and the music and shit like that. But nigga, we done been through all that. Yeah, that's <laughs> we so still crazy. Here smiling though. Yeah, one hundred percent, bro. I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you made it, bro. No, for sure. One hundred percent. Hell guy. yeah, come on, brother. My guy, my yeah, guy. I gotta take you fishing, bro. Have you ever been fishing? I went with my dad. Hard. I went with my dad. Yeah, we went with my dad, <clears throat> and it was cold. And then we was fishing. We was chilling. We was in a boat. Where'd you go fishing? In the ocean? This is in San Jose, like a lake. Okay. Yeah. And um, he was just like, "Come on, son, let's go." And I said, "Why?" Because we didn't catch anything. Okay. He said, and it was getting colder. He said, "The only thing we're gonna catch at this moment, the only thing that we're gonna catch now, no, what do he say? What do he say? The only thing that we're gonna catch at this point is a cold." <laughs> <laughs> Hit you with the dad joke of the fishing line. It was bodies? a dad joke. I was like, Jeez. "This nigga's stupid, cut." That's so we jumped it. in the whip and then we just dipped. But we didn't. We caught some shit a couple of times, cut. But like, hell yeah. But at that point, I should always remember that point. Yeah, it's I, my nigga. I love to fish, bro. Yeah. Damn, I love. I love. I tell this like uh, every person I speak to. I'm just like, damn, that's my nerdy side of it too. But it's just fun. I mean? 100 percent. Yeah, I'm about to get into that shit. Yeah. It's relaxing. I'm, I'm, you know, gotta get in the dad mode, nigga. Yeah, ready for it? Oh yeah, You're come ready on. For it. Yeah, bro. You and I both. I feel like we were ready. We want to be fathers. Oh, for sure. Know? Yeah. Could you imagine? Imagine the. I think I romanticize it. Me and my wife talk about this. I'm just like, all right. We joke and stuff about like, oh, we would do this, this, and this. We would raise our kids like this, this, and this. And then we just laugh like, yo, we know nothing about what this is gonna be. It's <laughs> really know? a whole different nothing. Realm. It's a whole different it's thing. It's necessary, though. Absolutely. It's necessary. You don't want to grow acclimated yeah. to just not having one. Right. Yeah. Make sure we got our stuff all the way together and shit, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, it's 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 gonna be. It's, that's a that's a different hood. I'm ready to bang. If your girl told fatherhood, you yeah, <laughs> that's all. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you <laughs> Shit. <Yeah. laughs> does she does she press you about it? Like, does she want? No, kids she's now? actually not ready yet. Yeah. Not financially. It's more so just like mentally. She has a lot of stuff that she wants to do. She knows that it takes a lot of responsibility. Got you. She wants to travel some more. And, of course. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she we flirt with the idea all the time. Yeah. Like if it happened today, you'd be like, hell yeah. Happy oh, I wouldn't run it. from it. Happy about it. Here it is. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's do it. Because it's only going to make my grind. I'm just only going to get bigger. So it's going to make my grind huge. Yep. I get exactly you get what me? you mean. Well, yeah, because like what you were saying earlier is like you get a, you get a good woman and you focus, bro. You focus. She got me on my grind. I can tell that that's happening to you. Like, it's amazing that like just watching you, you guys. I'm like, man, this he really loves her. You yeah. can you can tell. You know what yeah. I mean? The way that you showcase her and everything. Yeah. It's like, and I know what that does to a man. It just yeah. it changes the dynamic of it's how you weird, do everything. Bro. It's yeah. beautiful. It's because we were. As as men, we're designed to be providers and and selfless. Like that, and that's truly it. Like if you really yeah. love this girl, you're gonna you're gonna lay down your whole life for her. That's the whole idea. Is like my my holy marriage is based on on that. It's like I'm supposed to live out the example of Christ. What is the ultimate example of love? It's like I'm gonna lay down my body and give my blood up for all of you. Yeah. That, that don't even deserve it at yeah. some times. Yeah. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna do it out of like pure love you know what I for mean for sure yeah it does something to you it does something to you yeah. it's a definitely it definitely it's definitely a positive yeah definitely a positive it's hard as fuck it is bro it's very hard yeah. but I'm saying like it keeps you yes you know cause I could say without her I probably I probably would have been I don't fucking know right what I would have been doing bro I probably I don't know what I would have been doing I, I would have been on my grind right but not as hard as I am now yeah i'm on my grizzle my nigga for real i know <laughs> i know because of her but i feel i see you the, the same way it's just like it's just kind of yeah i mean no no woman really wants a nigga with no motivation no bro or not a, you know what i'm saying right. you know not having a lot of money and being somewhat broken trying to figure it out that's a different thing for sure because a, a woman can deal with that yeah. because there's always growth yeah and ambition but if you don't have ambition drive, and motivation yeah yeah she has to you know what i'm saying it's bad that's what i mean when i said like there's times where it's like i wouldn't have blamed her if she walked out of me it's like i was literally in a position i was like living in her house she's paying the rent for us i'm sitting there smoking weed all day like not doing shit i was that man i was that man you know me what too I, mean? <laughs> I love with, it oh not with this one yeah different one. Oh, you were that with that one i was that? with my wife now that's what i'm saying how long you been with her three years or so yeah yeah with, th- with this one I, I immediately um I immediately stepped into like wow. warrior mode. Got you. Yeah. Um, before that though, I would I was bad, bro. I was like mm. macking on bitches and using them for money and rides and shit like that. I was on some real West Coast pump, West Coast bum pimp shit. Got you. Got you. What made you want to step into it like right away with her? Um, like that. Bag. I just seen something in her. I feel like it takes that one woman to change you. You can <laughs> run across tons of girls. Oh yeah. All right. But most of them are just like. Mm-hmm. Bing bong. Right. This one's like different. Right. That was a crazy sound sequence. But I understand what just what you're there saying. You go. I didn't have yeah, to say much. I didn't have to say anything. Yeah. It's weird. That's gonna be. I think that's gonna be the top. That's gonna be like the, <laughs> the top. The video when we post it and shit. <laughs> yeah. But you're right. It's like a. It's an intangible thing, but. I think like there's qualities that you can see in it that's just like okay this person is is really different. This is different. somebody I can grow with. I can see it's growth in. I love the way that she's structured, organized, right? Um, meticulous and clean. She's Asian, so it's like meticulous and clean. Yep. I'm taking off my shoes at the door. Like just yep. beautiful, just things that I picked up from her that I really like. Love that. Yeah. Good habits. Right. Good I- habits that I picked up that I'm learning how to how to fold my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> i feel you <laughs> before i met her i was i didn't know how to fold my clothes damn and she showed you like i would just do this <laughs> this with her it's like right arm left arm up back down boom pack sun vibes i was gonna say like pack sun <laughs> like how they yeah like how they like refill the jc penny the fuck wow, out that's hard macy's the fuck down 
that's hard bro <laughs> i feel it i feel it like there's mad shit that i'll do around the crib that i know just doesn't meet my wife's standards i know because she'll tell me straight up like yo fool like no this is not how you do it let me show you i'm just like oh okay geez <laughs> sorry <laughs> just right like, right right at times i'm thinking like yo this little tiny woman is like bossing my ass like telling yeah, me how to yeah it's hard though you know she's uh you know what I, I really i really love most about her is like i don't have to I don't have to worry about how she handles herself and yeah. that, that was uh, always a worry with like the women that i were i was with before is yeah. like you worry about like how your girl's gonna respond in a situation sure. around men around whoever sure my wife is a g she comes yeah. from that code where it's like she knows what time it is she knows how to move she knows how to handle herself it's like you need that unless somebody is physically threatening my wife she's good anywhere and i never think twice i never think twice yeah. about how she moves and for man, sure it's so valuable bro you know you need that yeah Love you need that. that for sure for, especially for the um for the growth of your relationship yeah. the epitome of your relationship depends on that yeah you know because then life will be just annoying right. if you <laughs> if you don't i'm like because i've been there be, but you'll be pestering her she'll be pestering you what are you doing <laughs> who are you with and it's like on right. my fucking subway <laughs> by myself eating watching comedy show <laughs> Look where but you're then, at. But, but then, like, with the, you know, she'll think, oh, no, he, what, what bitch is you? No, you don't want that. I've had that. I had to leave that. No. No, thank you. Can't do it. Especially because I'm too nerdy. Yeah. And I don't get that shit off like that. I just yeah. don't. I'm like, if I'm away and I'm not with you, I'm like, in this, I'm making music. I'm doing something creative. I'm doing something, like, nerdy. Like, what, can, what more can you want as a woman? <laughs> <laughs> i'm not out here yo. You know i'm I, chilling bro i don't want to be right i move different now too even still like like i was saying like we got the og homies yeah love them but uh like i don't want to be in the mix yeah i don't want to yeah. i want to like i'm focused too i want to be training i want to be getting money i want to be with my my wife you know building our future family like I think those are good things as we get older. You know? Hell yeah. That's, that's how you be. age gracefully. You age like yeah. wine that way. 100%. You age like milk, you know, just doing the same shit every day. Going to the club, fucking with different bitches, getting their soul ties, <sighs> going back home, experiencing, bo- eating bad, fucking just a system of repetition. That's aging like milk. Yeah. To me. Aging like wine is what you just said. Yeah. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Building the fruits of your labor. Yeah. Planting the fruits of your labor. For sure. Yeah. Did you always want... Th- this or did it kind of just happen not really my nigga no. kind of just happened hell no yeah not really i feel I, the same way i didn't think about nigga it nigga didn't even know what the, i know i just wanted to be a fucking famous rap star that was just doing fly shit and fucking just famous that's what i wanted from the from since a young in really how old were you when you thought that i think when i was like as old as like 12 13 i wanted to be in, into music and be famous it's early and just be popping it right nowadays it's just like yeah sure i would love you know what i'm saying but i'm just i think i'm more so focused on solid shit like having money building yeah. a family getting a house like no. just getting those solid yeah. points cuz and i can have money and i'm comfortable right i'm not just content with that but it's just like i feel like that's more so what means the most now I see. Being able to go on trips and shit with your girl, doing shit like that. Like, that's like happy to me. To me, that's happiness. Right. New experiences, buying her gifts, having family, watching your kids grow. I mean, nigga, that's life. Yep. It's not. It's that's not, real. That's real life right there. Yeah for, yeah. for most people. Yeah. But not, it's like. But even still, like, do you have this? Do you have that desire? Like, you want to be a oh, rap star? Huge? You be oh, a star. yeah. I still yeah. got that desire. I still got it in me. I feel like things like this keep me going. Right. Having her keeps me just wanting that, wanting more, wanting more. I get you. You know what I'm saying? I'm still chasing that. I'm not comfortable. Or I'm not like, oh, I'm cool with just what I got. Nah. I'm right. like, man, let's keep going. What's the next project? Right. What's the next music video? Yeah. What's the next deal? Right. You know, who's on tour? What are we What are we doing? Mm-hmm. What's the next sound, nigga? Just stay creative. I need to get. I need to write a song tonight. Shit like that. I keep that passion alive forever. Right. Because it just takes that one record to just be like. Bro, you know what I'm saying? You haven't stopped. That's exactly. that's another thing. It's like since I I met you and I just would watch how you move. It's like you have the edge of the fact that you're just not going to stop. No, for you, sure. You're, not only is it like I understand that your will is like that. You have like one. Of, it's one of those. It's like unbreakable. Yeah. But what I'm talking to, what I'm talking about, is the hustle. The hustle yeah, of yeah. 
pumping the music out oh you know yeah what I mean? oh yeah bro a lot of artists including me i'm speaking on my own behalf but i know that this translates to a lot of people it's like um being self-conscious about dropping shit putting music out you want everything to be perfect you want everything to be, to be this way. that's how i felt about so much bro everything for a long time yeah. i'm barely now getting to this point of understanding but like you know what it's shit is really not that important as i think it is in my head about every little detail being sure, perfect and sure. this and that it's like people want to hear my music you know yeah you know what i mean it's like and you've done that consistently since yeah. i've known you yeah. you know you just put it out amazing a lot of this episode i was we were talking about relationships and uh, religion but we we're talking about you oh, okay yeah because you, you know where i was no i'm sure texting you and then i couldn't find a key oh no no problem are you okay yeah i'm just Chill, chill right here with us. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Look how your eyes light up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The baby. I love that. Yeah. Um, what was I just saying about... Um, okay, yeah. Being self-conscious as an artist. Do you ever go through that at all? Or you kind of just don't give a shit about Self-conscious, that? Self-conscious like overthinking the epitome of my musicianship or just wanting everything to be perfect enough sure. to where yeah? I get that. I feel like with wow. releasing music records and things like that, I'm not like a so... I'm not really extra with like oh it has to be like this i'm not like too too meticulous my meticulousness levels are like yeah mid right they used to be higher but i understand that the art has to get released got you the music has to go because i can critique my records as much as i want to right i just i have to let it go at some point i see you understand so um yeah i think so yeah for sure it's natural to you still yeah. still okay yeah i feel like i took it too far to where it's just like I would not want to release something because I was just like overthinking it too much. You know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like you ever struggle with that fear of just letting letting shit rock. I think it's know? just based on formula. I feel like yeah. When I get too create, like, because there's no such thing as too creative. When I get too adventurous and creative with my artistry, I feel like it's more so a formula now. I know what my fans want. All right. It's now a business. Mm -hmm. I know you niggas want kicking it in the back in the low ride. Who ride? Drop bys. My niggas know this down a ride. Yellow hill to loke. I do the fucking most, nigga. Uh -huh. Riding in the first class, no coach, nigga. Throwing up the seat. Like, just. Yeah. I feel like uh, that's what the fuck they want. So I'm going to give them that automatically. Right. But I feel like more in a creative <clears throat> vibe, I can go with Hit Town. Yep. or with the Covello or I can go with like a, I, you know right. I can create with y'all and just have fun and I can release through y'all so now that I found my niche and my formula I feel business wise it. to accumulate my revenue right. and keep my shit going right. I already know what they want I may not even be connected to that no more I see but I know that's what y'all niggas want like right. pizza gonna continue giving you that pizza right but nigga we might go over here and create some cinnamon twist with the new dip yep and the sprinkles yep with the with the Casper toy, right? A little different. A lot of niggas might not want it, right? But I already feed them my regular fans. Mm. But hey, here's something over here just in case. I love that. That's a great. That's a great analogy. Great way to put it. Yeah. And just so you know, I want to be the outlet to like we got the cinnamon sticks over there. That's crazy. That's hitting. That maybe a lot of people don't know about, but the ones that are here, they're that's gonna the really place to be. Because <sighs> when those, because yeah. things like that, when those hit, you're gone. Yeah. And, and it's probably freedom for you in a sense you know what i mean like this is more like yeah the business like you said you go. yeah i know this you i know what this. to do you need this i know you need this <laughs> here you let, go let me step out but like here. this the, this right here yeah, is like this might make it this might take a nigga out of the way right 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 bro use me as that <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying i got you we, well, okay well what's crazy is like we have a few of those yeah. Naturally, we have a few of those on forest, uh, on forest shit. You know what I mean? That's the maintenance yeah, thing yeah, right yeah. there. Anthony, my guy. Yeah. Um, but, bro, I really, I have some records that I've envisioned you on where it's like, it's so far. It's it's literally like if you were on a Frank Ocean joint. Yeah. That that, that kind of, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And that I just, bro, I come across this a lot. Actually, like, I'm in the whip of my my wife like listen it's like yo yellow there's a yellow verse yeah in that on cadence on this pocket would be out of here you know it what i mean just change the demographic and infrastructure <sighs> of the entire brand basically that, yeah yeah and vi visions too like there's this one record that i have it's called coast and um i wrote it like in this really tough part of my conversion 
and it's there's no drums on it it's like literally like a frank ocean type record but bro i just i can picture this crazy verse on it. I'm, I'm talking about god and like the struggle of my faith and stuff yeah. too and i've seen this visual of like not only like me in the visual like having to do with christ in the visual but not corny like people i hate to say this but there's a lot of like christian music and representation that it's cornified people sure. you know what i mean people sure. don't do this the right or sure. artistic kind of way that we want to hear it you know what sure, i mean sure sure but this idea is just like i can imagine that kind of record not a gospel record but we're openly talking about god i know yeah. that i know that you openly do this and i'm just like damn be this would be hard one. this would be I hard i was already thinking about getting you know on that I mean? venture i feel like i owe it to my savior to like do something like that in general for him just blessing me with that talent right got to give back yeah got to do a six track ep seven track ep so just for you to be saying it, i feel like it manifested already i would, obviously would need a vocalist on something like that yeah with my wordplay your wordplay your cadences your choruses hooks and all of that i feel yeah. like we can just like it's crazy bro escalate yeah. the whole game to a different level yeah. for sure for sure i hear what you're saying for sure you know i was saying? already thinking about that yeah that that because i think like in culture when that happens like bro think about these snoop and pharrell records that we love but they're so like at the time way out of the pocket of what snoop was doing Beautiful. fam like yeah yeah it's, it just makes me excited bro yeah, yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah, i'm just yeah. like wow we need that no you know? for sure yeah. for sure this is a legendary link up you yeah know? you have to you you know you got to figure it out you got to kind of plant seeds everywhere and just see who, who grows first yeah but always stay true to your roots right like for you the cavello the mananas yeah to me that's like i know your sound mm -hmm. that's yeah. like what you could be force feeding people but you can obviously change i feel like you've grown yeah for sure so there's certain things that you want to talk about i don't think that you would be talking about that now no no way it's you hard might be talking about like going to the mountain of zion i struggle bro. <laughs> this is what we were talking about before it started i struggle because it's like you know it's weird what a what a conversion will do to somebody because it kind of like it made this like wall of like restraint for me in yeah. a sense because you know i'd never i never gone through anything like that so naturally yeah. i got a little freaked out at first like things that i just pulled away from you know stop smoking stop drinking for the most part i mean uh, maybe here and there here and there you know what i mean but still like socially with the wifey fam i used to be drunk off henny every single night and smoking I mean, you were, five you were kind of sipping at moog right a little oh, bit yeah i was i was most likely crossfaded like you all were the blowing times. too yeah 100%. i wasn't blowing but i was i was sipping <laughs> yeah yeah but like you know going from that and like just now it's at a point where i've matured in it a little bit more where i understand more of my faith and i'm growing i'm growing in it to where i'm getting comfy but the content is not i can't i can't sit there and although i know people are gonna eat that up because that's a sound that everybody loved for me yeah but i can't consciously put this down my conscience is too sensitive I'm, yeah. I'm too aware of like what it is that i'm saying so i'm not gonna sit there and talk about how i'm doing this and that to a girl it's not you know i had to learn how to rewrite what it is that i yeah. feel in my soul literally but i know it sounds yeah. kind of corny but you know what i mean no i hear what you say it's like uh i had to relearn almost and yeah, yeah it freaked me out at first though, yeah, yeah 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 you it's know? gonna be a culture shock i, I get what you're saying yeah no I, I totally get it for yeah. sure yeah yeah no that's crazy man i'm telling you this life is gonna <laughs> this life will throw curveballs at you oh yeah fastballs underhands nigga you gotta just be ready to catch the motherfuckers man 100 percent. fast yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm running like tick tock we're on the time limit right now yeah, yeah 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 yeah. you know what i mean for real for real but yeah yeah brother for real thank you for doing this bro no of course I man you know you. what time it is with us yeah it's love let's, man let's get it bro. always gonna be here for you man thank you gene for sure yeah. The great podcast. The greatest podcast. The great podcast. The great podcast. Yeah. You know what time it is, man. We tapped in. Yes. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Shit.